Dallas. And it's basically been his responsibility to rewrite the script for the Valor season. How are they going to play on each game, trying to get that first win, and hopefully trying to see if they can compete for that ever-elusive championship. You talk about pilots, it all has to start out with the quarterback, Arvell Nelson, getting a second start today. 6'4", 230, the man is a serious threat to any defense that wants to put some pressure on him. And especially looking at his first output for this season was last week against the Soul. Came out, put up seven touchdowns. Seven touchdowns, Brian. Two picks, and that's expected in the arena. You're going to have an interception or two. But the fact that he's able to put up those kind of numbers last week, quite impressive. And he does have a fun target to work with, as well as a veteran leader to lean on in wideout Reggie Gray. Big play Reggie Gray. Don't ever mistake <laughs> that. The man is a veteran of the Arena Football League, and he's extremely productive. Last year with the Brigade, actually had 15 touchdowns and 642 yards. And you can see right now with seven games under his belt, 500 yards. He's just a little bit under 200 yards shy of breaking his last year's productivity and only four touchdowns away from breaking his touchdown productivity. Here's what's crazy about that. In Arena Football, you can score four <laughs> touchdowns in one game. So I wouldn't be surprised to see big play Reggie Gray add some more uh, notches to his belt. For sure. He could make some history. But, of course, this is an interactive sport here yes. at Monumental. And right now you're going to take a look at uh, Wes with Facebook. So, mm -hmm. Wes, you're going to be interacting with the fans. Oh, throughout. absolutely. That's why I brought my little friend here called <laughs> Lake Computer. And make sure you hit us up on the Arena Football uh, League watch page. You can check us out. I've got a few questions that are going to be talking to you throughout the entire game. So if there's something you want to know, if you've got a question, or perhaps answer my question, all that right there on Facebook. It's part of the interactive nature of the Arena Football League. It's going to be a fun one as the Valor look for that first win. And yeah. when you go in against a two-time defending champs, for the soul, it very much could be a trap game, too. It could yeah. be. And I think this is the perfect opportunity for the Valor to kind of sneak out and really make a name for themselves right now. I, I know people are looking at the 0-7 record and like, oh, this team might, you know, suck. They might be trash. No, they haven't been blown out. Matter of fact, the only lopsided of the game they had was against the Albany Empire the first time they saw them this season. Other than that, these games have gone down to the wire. They are an extremely competitive team, and it's time for them to put up numbers today. For sure. Let's head down to the field as we get set for the opening kickoff. And remember, the ball off the nets is live. Live ball off the net. That's what I love about arena football. You got to keep your head on a swivel. And remember, at any given moment, the tide can change. So we'll see what happens. I'm looking for a really big matchup today for the Valor and Soul. And I'd like to welcome in our audience from NBC Sports Washington checking out this game. Been a lot of great cap stuff feeling great in D.C. Oh, but let's gosh. see if the Valor can give us something to cheer for as well. So Pat Clark getting set for that opening kickoff, looking towards Dwayne Hollis, the return man for the soul. Pat Clark, a sure-footed kicker on this team. Again, another guy who played for a different organization last week, last year, excuse me. I'm pretty sure-footed in the extra points. Definitely going to try to continue his streak of productivity on that third element, that key component, special teams. Of course, down at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia. Part of that great three stadium setup they have and you got the Phillies and the Eagles the Super Bowl champion Eagles in that same vicinity I tell you it's a battle of champions right now yeah. Philly got the uh, football the NFL Super Bowl under their wing now of course DC home of the Stanley Cup feels good to say that right yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lord Stanley belongs in DC hopefully the Valor can get them a W and add to some of that lure Matt Clark checks with his fellas and away we go That'll take a bounce into the corner, and that'll be a touchback. There we go. Kind of a safe free play to get things started. There you get a look at the quarterback for the soul. That will be number four, Shane Austin, under center. You can look at his numbers from back in 2014 and 15. Look at that QB right. A lot of talent look at, there. Look there. at the yardage, man. Their regular quarterback had been Greg McGee out mm -hmm. with injury. Yeah, Howard University alum as well. The lefty, they brought him in to be a dual threat, both in the pocket and able to escape. You know, sometimes when you sneak out of that pocket there, you can get, you know, get hit a little bit. It's part of football. And, of course, the touchback sets you up at the five. Austin looking for his man, has him on the sideline. And nice little game there for number 21, Kilimanu Shah. And here are our Geico starters for the defense of the Valor. 
And who are you keeping an eye on, Wes? Look, the heart and soul of this defense is my man, Tracy Dalton. Back there in the secondary, he's a leader, a veteran, actually used to play for the Soul, so he's quite familiar with what they're able to do. But he's definitely going to have to keep his eyes on every person on the other side of the ball because this Soul team is powerful. Austin back under center. Man in motion. Gives it to the handoff. First down and more. Still going. Hasn't touched the wall. A huge gain inside the 10-yard line by the big guy. Jeremy Richardson. Do you talk about a sneaky play call? I have total respect for that call. A run on a first down? Like, come on, the defense isn't expecting something like that. The fact that he's able to leak out of the backfield, oh, you talk about size. You're looking at a 240-pound running back who <laughs> really is more of a fullback. You don't see a lot of tailbacks in arena football. You see fullbacks. That's what happens when a defense isn't expecting something. Yeah, the, the fullback running back position in arena football would be a tight end or a light offensive lineman in the other league. So right now, here we go inside the red zone if you will fade flag comes down ball is caught initial look on the field is a touchdown for the soul it looks like darius prince with the reception but we'll wait for the call he's part of the darius brothers darius prince and darius reynolds both of these guys leaders on the soul offense they're going to go ahead and decline the penalty on michael knight they're going to say that that catch from prince is good looking at the replay you can see right there was open the entire way shane austin stands tall in the pocket just delivers a great touch pass to the back of the end zone. Not even a 50-50 ball. It's an all or nothing. That's exactly what a quarterback's supposed to do. Either your man catches it or nobody does. Great play for the soul. Sometimes a perfect pass will be great defense, and that's what happened to Michael McKnight there. Extra point being set up. And that is through, and that is good. Soul go up 7 0. 12 06 to go in the first. And we will take a quick break and be back right here. Welcome back, as here are our keys to the game. Wes, take it away. All right, keys to the game presented by MedStar. The first thing that you have to consider is this. It's one at a time. We're talking about one game, one play at a time. 0-7 record, you got to throw that out of, the, out of the way. You just got to really focus on what's your assignment right now and make a play for yourself. The second key to the game is no big plays. I know they just had a quick score from the soul, but the Valor have to figure out a way to limit big plays. Those are momentum makers. They're back breakers. If you can keep the game under control, you have a chance. But this last one, the third key, 60 minutes, that's the key to any football player and any sport, as a matter of fact. you got to play an entire game. I told you earlier, the Valor don't really get blown out. They just just make little mistakes here and there, but they've got to find a way to put a full game together, and I think that's the key to victory right there. Three keys to victory for MedStar Health. It's all about the little details. The big plays, the big kind of moments will shape themselves, but if you don't take care of the little things, that's how losses pile up. They really do, and I think, again, Coach Benji McDowell has really tried to refocus this team. You can feel that the culture in the locker room has changed a little bit. Whether the scoreboard reveals it or not, these guys actually enjoy playing with each other. They know what's on the line. It's your personal reputation, yeah. your family reputation. You're just representing yourself, your alma maters, and, of course, the current organization that you're in. And I trust that these guys, Tracy Belton, Commissioner James Gordon, Jimmy Gordon, <laughs> great football players that really enjoy what they're doing. So hopefully they're going to be able to answer so back real quick. Soul getting ready to kick off after leading 7-0 off that first quick touchdown. And right now, if you're the Valor, you got to be sure to answer. Arena football, a lot of it is just keeping pace. Absolutely. I mean, we talked about one play at a time. 
Philly scored kind of quick. That's fine. Now it's your turn to get the ball and respond. And remember, we've got Arbel Nelson, who is quite familiar with this Philly team because last week, like I said, seven touchdowns and uh, 500 yards passing. I mean, excuse me, 300 yards passing. It's, it's a lot that he can do with the system. And of course, we are taking the feed from Philly. So sometimes the sideline reporters might not be Wes Hall or Brian Kapoor. No. So our buddies up in Philly. <laughs> well, I mean, we wish we could be there in Philly, but we're glad you're here with us today. You know what I mean? And don't forget, like I said, we're also on Facebook, too. So if you see something, say something, let us know. I'm going to probably throw a question out here in a minute. But right now, looking forward to the Valor really being able to go out and answer on offense. I don't know if they're going to run it first or throw it first. I would assume they try to get Reggie Gray involved early. That's one of the things that they were actually working on last week. Each of the first three series of that game started off with a pass to Reggie Gray. They got it completed on the third attempt. But that's just kind of a pace setter that they want to try to see how quickly they can get Nelson and Gray on the same page. Well, let's see what they choose to do as we get prepped for this kickoff. I will tell you this, you gotta love the Philly fans that come out, they got the rally towels going and everything. They really support their team. Well, I think after the Eagles, any football they can get at this point, they will keep going back to it right now. <laughs> Too true. That goes through the uprights, and that will be a touchback. So a couple touchbacks each way, and yeah. you usually see returns in the AFL. I tell you, the guy that was back for that return was Chris Duvault. He is a serious threat as a return man. And what I like about him, he reminds me a lot of Devin Hester. I'm a little old-fashioned. I want to say Deion Sanders, but he's a Hall of Famer, so I choose not to compare him to anybody that <laughs> hasn't done Hall of Fame things. But here we are in Chris Duvault, and then you got to think, of course, the big man himself, Arvell Nelson, number four, standing at 6'5", 230 pounds. If he doesn't see a lane to throw it in, he will bring it down, and he will run. That is one of the reasons Coach Benjamin Dowell brought him in. It's only a matter of time for him to get these Valor offense on the board. All right, first and ten, Valor getting set up. Dropping back, has a man just out of the reach of Gray, and you had that well scouted. Let's take a look at our offensive starters for the bout. And Wes, who are you looking for? Well, of course, we talked about Alvaro Nelson and Reggie Gray, but here's the guys that you really have to pay attention to. Josh Reeks, great hands man, reminds you of like a Michael Irvin type, but the guy who jumped off the screen last year, or excuse me, last week, was Jared Dangerfield. The second half of the game against the Solos, like, who is this dude? Where did he come from? Starts putting up points, catching passes and everything. Like, Jared Dangerfield, the entire receiving core, you got to watch. Dropping back, flinging one deep. Looking for perhaps a back shoulder or an underthrown ball. Either way, incomplete. A little underthrown by Nelson right there. Of course, working on the touch. It's not like outdoor football where you can put a little, little pepper on it. You got to kind of lay off just a little bit, unable to connect. But again, who did he throw the ball to? Danger field. Danger field. Show the man some respect. Getting a look now at the lineup for the Souls defense. They'll definitely have to work their way through Romaine Hollis and Jones in that secondary to try to complete some of those long, quick hitters. And don't mistake uh, number 56, Willie McGinnis, for the New England Patriot, Willie McGinnis, from back in the day, the Hall of Famer as well. Nelson drops back, looking, looking. Incomplete, no flag comes out. That was right at the marker. That brings up a fourth down, and in arena football, they do not believe in punters. No, no punting allowed, but man, you talk about a great pay by Larico Stevenson. Last week, another problem for the Valor was limiting Stevenson. He hangs back there at safety, and all he has to do is come downhill. Again, another attempt to try to get it to Dangerfield, but Stevenson, if you're looking for somebody on that sole defense that you have to make sure you keep aware of where he is, it's number 23 in the teal and the slate. 9.30 to go. Valor with their first kind of big moment of this very young game. Let's see what Nelson does under center. Nelson surveys. Pressured. Escapes. Dumps it off. If it's a catch, it's a first down. It is. First down, Valor. This time, Dangerfield comes down with it. But they hold everything. We have a zebra conference. Got to get those zebras involved. So first down for the Valor. Yeah. 
Nothing wrong with that. Hey, defensive holding, we'll take the penalty yards. It's what we want. Anything they give you, we will take. And maybe that's the spark that will get them going. Things yeah. looked a little dicey on those first three plays, but sometimes it just takes one. It just takes one, and the guy you're looking at right there is Romain for the soul. He, uh, James Romain, and Reggie Gray. You're going to see these two matched up a lot. We actually focused on them last week, and they did not disappoint. Reggie Gray is going to be in the slot most of the time. Romain's going to be the safety over top with him. That matchup is definitely something you're going to keep your eye on. Nelson holds it, looks near side, and they say catch. Gray connects with that one for a nice gain. Looks to be just shy or perhaps a first down. Let's see the spot. I tell you, you have to appreciate the poise that Reggie, excuse me, Arvell Nelson has getting out of the pocket, a double pump fake. Defenders hate that. <laughs> it's like, I want to peel my ears back and come and get you. You can tell Coach is a little upset about that decision, but hey, it works out for the battle. So second and one, looking for that and more. Has it on the wall, and that will draw the whistle. That's Reese with the catch. Tell you, Josh Reese is a great possession receiver. It's not oftentimes you can get a guy at his stature that can really work between the secondary and the linebacker unit. They know how to use the wall. Doesn't necessarily always have to run deep nine routes. Just run a little flag or a post route across the middle of the field. And you've got a quarterback like Arvell Nelson who's tall enough to see over that, that offensive line. He can be patient in the pocket because he knows what's going to happen. He's just waiting on the play to develop. Great connection between he and Reese. Nelson out of Texas Southern. Big guy. Giving it to the up back. And that's going to be, for the moment, a minimal gain. And it will remain a minimal gain as that one was stuffed right up the middle. That's the commissioner, Gordon. Jimmy Gordon played tight end in college at Buffalo. Shout out to the Bulls. They slip him in at, at fullback every once in a while because, frankly, the guy's a football player. He's an athlete. I mean, how many of you guys you know that can switch from tight end to playing a Mac linebacker? Like, that's, that's, that's kind of remarkable. It's like putting Ron Gronkowski in a middle linebacker for the Patriots. The fact that he can really make that transition is kind of awesome. That's a nice little switch of you, you think pass, 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 but mixing in some runs will keep that defense honest. Nelson trying to direct traffic, looking for a man, and that goes incomplete. Nelson's delivery is very Byron Leftwich-like. He has that long sidearm type of throw. Yes, he changes the points of delivery. It makes it a nightmare for defensive linemen. They're taught to peel their ears back and just put their hands up if they're not able to get to them, but, you know, such is life. Right now, though, I want to make sure you log on to Facebook and search the Arena Football League Watch live page to watch the game live and leave comments and questions. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and fire one off for you right now before this play goes up. Have you noticed any changes in the team since the coaches changed? Go ahead and let us know right there on the Arena Football League Watch page, and I will purposely answer your question in our next break. Personal service from West Hall. Got to love it. That's what I'm here for. 5.50 to go. Big third down. Nelson looking. Floater has it. Touchdown, Valor. Big time catch from Duval. Chris Duval didn't get the punt return, excuse me, the kickoff return that he wanted earlier and able to make up for it. Look at Nelson put some touch on the ball. Oh my gosh, you would think with a guy as big as he is, as much power as he can work up, the finesse, such delivery. Oh my gosh, back to the end zone. They've been working on that. Remember, he's only been with the team. Nelson has only been with the team one week. This is his second game. Sometimes it takes a little while for the quarterback and receivers to get on the same page. Here they are putting up points. Gotta love it. Pat Clark looking to tie it up with this extra point. Kick is up and through. We are tied at seven. 4.58 to go in the first. As we will take a quick break.
Welcome back, Brian Kapoor here alongside Wes Hall. Mm -hmm. And Wes, the people are interacting on Facebook Live with Absolutely. us. Absolutely, I told you to go to Facebook Live and talk about it. The question is this, have you noticed any changes for the Valor since the coaching change? And of course, you get some cynical people in the comment section on Facebook, <laughs> hello? Todd Mintz, he's like, what changes what, some bad defense? Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Benji McDowell actually part was part of the defense, and that's actually been a great improvement for the Valor. But you also have to remember, it's all about the general on the field. Arvell Nelson, you need a strong quarterback that's going to be able to balance things out and be able to put up points quickly because in arena football, it's not something spectacular to put up 40 or 50 points. That's average, but you have to have the guy that's able to do that. And I'm sitting there looking at some more. Like, Valor looks better all around. This is Chris Becker. Thank you. He says, uh, this move should have been made last year. Well, we're in the present time. I can't change <laughs> last year. Trust me, if it was up to me, I'd win championships every year. <laughs> but right now, the Valor are focused on this week, and this opponent happens to be the Philadelphia Soul, who they saw last week. So thank you guys for the comments on Facebook. Feel free to continue to hit us up. I will be answering questions. And yes, earlier I did say personally, even though that's what I read. I'm discussing with you guys. You know we're having fun. That's what the fun of live TV is all about. <laughs> so yes, we'll make sure we don't stumble over our words, but make sure we have a fun during this game. Yeah, as we get set back down to the field now, the Soul getting ready to receive the kick. Ball away, trying to get off the wall, mishandled, muffed, and it touched the wall. So yes. it's an automatic touchback, just to kind of explain what happened there. Right, sometimes, you know, we, we consider things being live at all the time. There actually are dead ball situations on kickoff, and that happens to be one of them. But again, so far, the Soul actually have not had an opportunity to return a kickoff, which is something good for the Valor. Puts them in good field position, it kills momentum plays, and allows everybody to kind of play at the pace that they need to. The good news for the Valor defense was that they basically gave up three plays. There was nothing sustained from Philadelphia that you have to worry we can't get off the field. Contain the big plays and you'll be all right. That's absolutely correct. So 4.20 to go. First, here we go. As Austin goes under center for the soul. Quick hitter, nope, pulls it down. Gets pulled down and is that the commish? He's usually involved in any big play right there. I know Jake Payne, number 99, is there. Yeah. Taking got the him big 4-0, David Washington, 6'2", 320 pounds. Mm -hmm. When he gets a hold of you, you're going to the ground. I'm just saying, that's a big man move right there inside. Austin, fortunate to pick up a gain of four, though. So fortunate not indeed. I'm talking about a 320-pounder. Yeah. Be able to shake off the offensive guard <laughs> and get to the quarterback. That's good technique. 3.35 to go now for the Soul. Austin surveys looking deep into the wall. Of course, that is a catch. You just got to get some of the wall for that catch. There is Prince with another good catch. You can check it right here as Austin's able to deliver outside. Prince, now you know the rules in the arena. You, if you catch the ball, you get to keep the ball. But if you get a player in your lap, you got to give the player back. <laughs> so Michael Knight on the defense right there able to contain or, shall I say, remove <laughs> Darius from the playing field at the time. It's like, a, like one of those uh, action figure standees you get to keep. Oh, up. man. <laughs> That's what you got to love about arena football. Nowhere else can you get that close to the action. Austin looking deep again. End zone incomplete as they look to split two defenders but not having it as they converge Belton, one of the two back there. Look, Knight and Belton, I told you that Tracy Belton was a guy that I love to watch on this defense. As a job, as a safety, his job is to not let anything get behind him. And I think Coach McDowell's done a great job of shifting their placement on the field. Either he was going to catch that ball, Darius Reynolds was going to catch that ball, or nobody else was. But when you have two def qualified defenders back there, it makes it really difficult. Good job for the I just realized who the Souls uniforms look like. It looks like the Eastern Ramblers, one of the DCPS school wow, uniform looks. Wow, good call. I was trying to place it. <laughs> it's like I finally got my set. finger on it. Uh, someone was offsides, hey. offense or defense. Let's see where they go. Yes. It's going to be defensive offsides. And 
And Simon says, don't go. Simon says, don't move. <laughs> can't help it, those deep linemen, man, when they pull that hand off the ground, there's only so much you can do to keep that weight under control. But yeah, I mean, it happens, it's part of the game. But remember, they've got to minimize self-inflicted wounds. We talked mm -hmm. about no big plays and playing a full game. Part of playing a full game is to not give up anything to your opponent. That hidden yardage, as it were. Yes. 135 now. Austin, looking deep again. And does he catch that? Incomplete. Ooh, that was a very dangerous play that could have ended in a way that the Valor really didn't want to. Austin going outside on the corner route, looking for a, a connection that's just not there. But again, you're going to see that route really exploited a lot in arena football. It will either be a corner route or a flag route. And it pretty much takes the defensive back and puts him at a disadvantage because he's got a guy sprinting at him who all of a sudden turns and runs across the field. Quarterback has a small window that he can put it in before it either goes into the stands or right into his receiver's hands. Right now, it looks like the soul just want to take shot after shot after shot long. They aren't taking any little chunk plays. And another shot deep, nearly picked off by the Valor. It looked like Knight was going to bring that one down. Look, they call him Knight Rider for a reason. The man is a bit hawkish when he sees the ball in the air, and I love what he does here. He reads the route. He knows automatically this ball is going up to Reynolds. All he's got to do is watch it. But I love the fact that he's in the right position. That's coaching right there. It's not just his athleticism. Coach McDowell put him in the right place to make a play, and that's the result. Of course, a running clock in arena ball, so that's why it continues to move despite the incompletion. And it looks like the Soul are going to be content to let the first end on that note. So he looks a little upset right there. That'll do it for the first. And we will take a quick break as that is the end of the first in Philly. Welcome back, as uh, we've had a good one so yeah. far, but all eyes on the wide out Reggie Gray and Wes. He is chasing some numbers today. We're talking about chasing. We're going to chase him on down this Red River, <laughs> per se. Uh, we're looking at these stat tracker for Reggie Gray. I told you, coming into this game, 11 touchdowns already on the season, just seven games in. Possibly could break his last season productivity, which was 15, and that was what he did with the brigade. So now, I mean, think about it. I told you at the beginning of this game, first play of the series, goes to Reggie Gray. Yep. So now when the Valor get the ball, first play is probably <laughs> going to go to Reggie Gray. I'm just, you know, that is some other of a soothsayer. <laughs> I'm just paying attention. But that's something that you really have to respect about him because he had 678 yards last year. Mm -hmm. That's a ton of productivity from a receiver of his size. And now look at what he's already got, 500 yards thus far. And you talk about receptions that it took to get those 678 yards. Last year it was 70, and he's already got 500 on 42, so he's already overtrending that he's you know, pretty much going to do it. I think possibly maybe this game, maybe next, that he goes ahead and does that. But we're going to definitely kind of keep our eye on, on that for the remainder of the game. Yeah, just one catch for eight yards so far, but we are just getting started. And oh, yeah. look for them to target him. And I've been very impressed with the quarterback play from Nelson so far. I think Byron Leftwich with that sidearm. Yeah. That sidearm and that touch that he has is, is great. You can throw a football through a wall, but if you can't place it and make a catchable throw. Right. 
Um, you, you can't play quarterback. Well, as a quarterback, your job is to facilitate the offense. You've got to put your players in positions to win. And so, yeah, it's great to have a high point of delivery, but sometimes you got to side on one. I know <laughs> Brett Favre, even your man Tony Romo, was good at doing that. Can't believe I gave you a Tony Romo shout-out in the middle of this broadcast, but hey, there you go. But another thing about it is also his poise in the pocket. When the play breaks down, he's able to stay with the play, move throughout the pocket, sometimes leave the pocket completely, and use his height to an advantage. He's able to see where guys are on the field and anticipate it. And again, we talk about the strength that he has. You can't forget the finesse that he has. Able to place the ball in a great position. That's why Chris Duvall was able to get that early touchdown. I'm expecting more of him for throughout the game for this. And of course, at the end of that first quarter, you saw Coach Clint Dozell from the Soul a little upset with things, and the Soul, the two-time defending champions, can't be happy with one, how low scoring it's been, two, being tied with a winless team. So let's see what the Soul do to try to counteract that. But right now, the Valor, I'd have all hands on deck in the secondary, fourth and five. Austin looking deep again, has his man. That is a touchdown for the Soul as he completes it to Prince. And the Soul been going deep all game, and how do you blow that one? It's honestly lack of communication. It's blown coverage right there. Belton looked like he was supposed to be playing outside. And you can just see Michael Knight let him go. He let Prince get behind him. You can't allow your receiver to do that. He's supposed to pass him off. Just blown coverage right there. You can see Belton clapping to himself like, ah, oh, man, I told you to do it. You know, <laughs> all manner of things that people don't actually hear on the field. <laughs> But there's some conversation, but I'm certain that they'll be able to bounce back from that. But you can't have plays like that. That's, those are the plays we talk about are difference makers in the arena football. Right? With the exception of that one 20-yard run, the Souls offense has been Austin three steps locked it deep. That's all it takes. And if I know that, the Valor defense has to know that as uh, Philly converts that one. And if that's a known fact, you've got to coach your guys up. Give them a little bit more cushion, maybe bump on the line, figure that out. Your safety basically has to pick where he's going. He does, but you also have to factor in this fact. They did play this team last week. So as a coaching staff, it's not often that you have to play back-to-back -back matchups against a team, which basically what I'm saying is they have to throw out the old playbook. You really have to come to the table with something completely new, and that also means the same thing on the defensive side of the ball. So instead of everybody playing man coverage head up, Sometimes you're going to have to switch and let the safety get come over top and have a DB stay put. As crazy as it may sound, you've got to switch something up, and sometimes that creates situations where there's miscommunication in the secondary. For sure. Is. Then we get a look at Austin as uh, he he's just been slinging it today. Oh man, he does not care. He is no good. Just he does not care who gets the ball. It's called the open man, and I mean he's really done a good job of keeping this sole offense moving in this fashion that they're used to. This is a two-time AFL champion team. They are a well-oiled machine. They do not like losing. Like you said, it's it's weird for them to come into a, to this game four and three. Like normally they're the team that's undefeated that everybody wants to knock off the top of the mountain. Here they are. They've proven that they're vulnerable. It's just a matter of the Valor finding out that recipe and trying to turn that into a win. By the way, Austin, three years of experience, age 37, onside kick. Does it go back to the soul? It does. So the soul pick up an extra possession. And look who got the ball. Darius Prince. Look, if the guy's name's Darius and he plays on the Philadelphia Soul, he's probably going to be a playmaker right there. You can hide him, see him lurking in the back of the end zone, ready for the onside. Valor didn't see it coming. They didn't have their hands team up for that. They were not prepared for that. And kudos to Coach Ozell for calling that play. If you see a, 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 your opponent kind of napping a little bit, go ahead and exploit it. You got playmakers like that on the field, go ahead and take advantage of them. I mean, he, he made a great reception. I don't know if it would have counted as a real catch, but sure. he definitely came down with the ball, secured it, and now let's see if he can secure, secure another one. If I'm the Valor, let's play some coverage D. You gotta play some coverage D and do this. Forget that last play. Come out and play. You got more plays to make opportunity. It's only one touchdown game, enough time on the clock, plenty of life left. And meanwhile, on the other side, if you're the soul, this is maybe where you start throwing some things short, looking to break things deep. So a lot of things to play with as the chess match unfolds on the turf. Not sure what the discussion is here. Looks to be part of the chain game getting set up there at the top of the screen. With everyone in the Wells Fargo Center just eyes on him. Italian, a little pressure, guys. <laughs> a little pressure. See Coach Benjamin down on the left side of the corner right there. Mm. 
Nelson looks. Mishandled and just a straight draw. Ooh, Shane Austin wants that one back. He had an open receiver, just he made the fatal flaw. You, you, you covered games before. What am I told you about receivers? Don't let it hit your body. Catch it with your hands. As soon as it comes into the body, you're going to lose it. As you get a look at team owner in pink there, Ron Jaworski. Joss loves football. Good guy. <laughs> Takes it. No, I'm serious. Ron Jaworski is a good guy, man. You got to love it. He loves his team, supports him. He, he knows football very well. I loved watching him break down film and, and do some of that stuff. You, you felt smarter as a football fan when yeah. you'd watch games after that. Right. You got to think about the fact that... Uh, Nelson has his man right at midfield. First down, gain of about 12. So Nelson went back, and they finally got that connection. But it's back to the point about Josh. You know he's feeling good. Eagles won the Super Bowl? <laughs> Come on. You see that completion right there, OB on defense. And that's going to be a combination that you're going to try to see throughout Austin in this game. He's going to try to find those receivers right there about 7 to 10 yards away in a window. That's where he likes to throw the ball. That makes him comfortable, and you're going to definitely see the soul try to go back to that. Austin, again, age 37, just his third year in the AFL. Dropping back again. Flings it, has his man. That's Prince. Catch, first down. You're going to see it every time. I told you, that's where he likes to throw the ball, soft and underneath. Of course, they're going to go for deep plays every once in a while. That 7 to 10, that's his sweet spot. He doesn't have the same height that Arville Nelson has. Shane Austin's a little bit shorter. So if you can get the ball out of his hands faster, you have a better opportunity for your offense to be successful. So look to be getting in a little bit of rhythm. They're starting to throw some, some shorter passes. It was just three steps and ball out. Now it looks like Austin's holding a little bit longer, and all of a sudden you're 11 yards away from the end zone. Let's see what they choose to do. Keep an eye on the, the fullback here. Austin to the end zone, wide open, and that is another sole touchdown. Aaron Washka with the catch. Washka's a problem. 6'3", 205, and he ran a corner route, and he kind of telegraphed it. Last week, he was also very impactful in the game against the Valor. It's a simple route, just goes up, and again, miscommunication from the Valor secondary between Belgium and Knight. They find that sweet spot, that soft spot in the back of the end zone is very dangerous. If I were coaching in any of this, I would definitely advise my secondary to anticipate location. Yes, know where the guy is in front of you, but think like a quarterback. Where is the hole in the field? That's where the ball is going to go. <laughs> I do love that if you go to an arena football, football game, for the most part, it seems like you end up leaving with a souvenir. Oh, yeah. A ball, a football player from the stands, you never know. You never know. <laughs> they sign autographs and stuff after the game. It's a really cool experience. So the soul go up 21-7, 10-12 to go in the second quarter. We will step away. Welcome back, Brian Kapoor here alongside Wes Hall. And 
West, things have not started out well for the Valor, but the good news is there's still a lot of football to go. Oh, yeah, but the thing is, it's, it's early in a football game. There's plenty of time on the clock. Valor have not lost anything as of right now. They're totally fine because, remember, it's AFL. You can score really quickly. What I'm impressed about is the fact that Arvell Nelson has gotten into a rhythm, mm -hmm. okay? What's crazy is, on the other side of the ball, so is Shane Austin. So this Valor defense really has to figure out Something in the communication in the secondary has got to come and gel together. But overall, they just need to calm down, relax, take it one play at a time, work on communication, and work on fundamentals. You know your assignment, mm -hmm. do your job, and everything will work out just fine. It's early in the game. You can't fall into the uh, Keanu Reeves replacements. Mm. San, uh, what is it? San, San, uh, sand Trap? Yeah, sand I call trap. it Sand Trap. Sand I remember trap. the most yeah. things I remember from that movie are Chick Dick Scars, Glorious Forever, Let's Play Ball. <laughs> No, but in all seriousness, there's plenty of football left to play with the Valor and Soul game. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the Valor can do to answer back. Quicksand is what I was looking for. There you go. As the kickoff is on. I'll go way back off the net and lost the track of it. Spins around and Tolliver, that looks like a gain of maybe two. And the Valor, that, they're going to be way backed up to start this one off. I'm going to give a ton of respect to Chris Duvall for what he did right there. Because first of all, have you ever stood on a football field and turned your back to a defense? Yeah, that's crazy in itself. Catch a ball off the net. You can see that it hit the ground, bounced around a little bit. The fact that it didn't turn into a safety is remarkable. A ra able to evade a couple of tacklers quickly, that instinct. Ton of agility, a lot of core strength, a lot of lower body strength. Those guys that, those are the guys that if you play outdoor football with them or pick up football, you never wanted to give them the ball because you knew it was going to happen. He's going to take off like a bolt of lightning. Really good job of Duvall maintaining possession of that ball and setting his offense up. Nelson hits his man. First down, a little bit more as that is Triple T, T.T. Tolliver with the catch. The Jerry Rice of the league showing poise as a veteran does. I love the way he sat down in the pocket, had him lined up inside on that route, just able to make a simple possession, get up field. That's what you want out of this receiving core, whether it's Tolliver, Reese, Dangerfield, Duvall, doesn't matter. Whoever gets their hands on the ball, make a play. First and 10, getting set from the 15, quick hitter. Nelson connects, fighting for the first down, looks to be a smidge short, but second down and about one up coming. Nice catch there from Dangerfield. Jared Dangerfield out of Western Kentucky. What did I tell you about Jared Dangerfield? If you're not paying attention, he will hurt you. If you are paying attention, he will hurt you. A great stiff arm on the defender, able to get some separation, gain a couple extra yards. Now you start to see this Valor offense clicking a little bit. I think the clue is shorter plays, shorter routes, get a rhythm going, and then you'll get that payoff. 8.15 to go, second and one, Nelson. Hits his man Dangerfield again. We'll get the first and a little bit more. He had to enjoy big play Reggie Gray going for a big ride there as he got flipped making a block outside for Dangerfield. I love seeing these guys block for each other. No receiver on the Valor team is afraid to get in, in up in your numbers, as we would say. There were other things we used to call it, but we're just saying a little contact right there. But great job of Dangerfield again, getting up front getting the ball, and you got to really think about Shane Strafford as the uh, offensive coordinator, really calling the plays right here, drawing up a narrative for Nelson to stay comfortable and make some productivity as they walk down the field. Keep an eye on Gray in the slot, running the post. Nelson pulls it down, and he gets taken down for the sack. Offensive linemen looking at each other, trying to figure out what happened. Well, what happened was Nelson tucked the ball down and really didn't get a chance to see who was coming down his way. That's big play Willie McGinnis. I told you not to be mistaken from the NFL. <laughs> Willie McGinnis, who played with the Patriots and Browns. Maxim McGinnis did a really good job in there, but Nelson, as big as he is, he knows that he has a 50-50 shot if he brings the ball down, that one man is not going to be able to take him down. That time, that was the other 50 that didn't work in his favor. So it's okay. Got to keep, keep, gotta keep your eyes downfield. Take another look here has his eyes downfield, and once the pocket got cluttered, you can't bury your head in an offensive right lineman. Yeah, 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 it collapsed right there, and that's, sometimes that's what happened. The soul did a really good job of muddying and dirtying the pocket, and, Nel and Nelson felt that. But like you said, when you drop your head, you can't see what's coming. And, uh, that was the result of the sack and the play, now it's second 15. Crowd starts to get loud in Philly. Nelson drops back, looking. Into the wall, incomplete. 
Bullsaw to get up. I thought TT was pulling the old uh, Jim Brown move right there, the old mm. slow to get up every play. They never know if I'm hurt move. It's actually a really smart strategy. But anyway, as they're getting a call right there for Stratford, trying to figure out a formula to put some more points on the board quickly. Time ticking in arena football, so you know, there's not a lot of time guaranteed. You have to be real wise in how you use that play clock. So here they are, marching towards six points. As Nelson sets up, Tolliver in motion. All three receivers starting on the right side of the field. Nelson, quick hitter, has the first down in Dangerfield. Excuse me, not, yeah, he does have the first, no, short of the first short down. First. Mm -hmm. I lost track of the sticks. Right, right. he's looking at the sticks. Brings up fourth and manageable. Again, Dangerfield, a great possession receiver. You see Nelson waits patiently. Dangerfield's route was only a hitch. It was a three yards up turn around. Patience. For a second there, I was saying his knee wasn't down, but you get forced into the wall. Forced into the wall, put you out of bounds. Yeah. 5.30 to go. Valor, you gotta be thinking, do you wanna score quick so you can hopefully get another possession, or do you want to make this the last possession of the half? That's a good question. Right now, they gotta focus on getting that first down. For sure, fourth and nine. Nelson looking, rolling out to his left, sets his feet, lofts it. It's brought down, touchdown, Valor. Duvall goes top shelf to score that one. Big Chris Duvall, what? Out of Illinois, goes up top. Look at Nelson buying time, keeping his eyes downfield, touch on the pass, throwing his receiver to a spot, and Chris Duvall does the work. He climbs the ladder and goes up and gets that. That's a highlight reel right there. You have to add that one. Look at that. High points it with his hands, comes down with the ball. That's a beautiful play. The key to all that was Nelson taking the second to set his feet. Yes, yes. You could not have said that better. As the Valor get that one back, seven point game. Seen a lot of other quarterbacks struggle with that as we will take a quick break and be back with the remainder of your first half. Frank Kapoor here alongside Wes Hall. And Wes, we've had smiles that may need yeah. to be surgically removed. And why <laughs> is that? Because the Washington Capitals are the 2018 Stanley Cup champions. Say it again. Say it again. It just the feels Washington right. The Washington Capitals feels are the right. 2018 oh Stanley Cup champions. And with Lord Stanley yes. comes a parade. That's almost the best part. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody come out. So here are a couple details about it right here. Capitals are obviously going to celebrate the Stanley Cup championship with the parade Tuesday, June 12th at 11 a.m. NBC Sports Washington will actually start their pre-coverage at 10 a.m., but the parade starts at 3 p.m., and it's going to proceed along Constitution Avenue from 23rd to 7th Street. That is a historical route. Oh, my gosh, you have no idea how excited I'm going to be out there. Trust me. I don't care how I'm there. I'm there. Best part is, for you, it's free, open to all members of the public, and, of course, this championship parade is all about lifting the cup. Who has actually had to be <laughs> pried out of the hands of Alexander Ovechkin. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, I, uh, there's public transportation, different methods of getting here. Guess how I'm getting there. How are you go? I'm going to run. You better run. <laughs> All the way from Arlington. As, uh, As a matter of fact, where were you when they won the cup? I was at home. I wanted to go. I wanted to go downtown and stuff. Mm -hmm. My friends and I agreed mm -hmm. we would stay out of the city. What? Celebrate from afar. What? Be the first to buy the memorabilia. Ah. Because that—that's what our game plan was. Swaghound. I and see. And then as soon as the parade hit, or the uh, as soon as we got a parade, we we're going to be all over that. Okay, I, I feel you on that. I lost my voice. <laughs> that's why I sound like. <laughs> Like a combination of Chewbacca and running shower water. 5% of a West Hall is better than 95% of most others. Onside kick the other way, and the soul will get it with great field position. I like that they tried that. Brian, by the way, that uh, check is in the mail for that lovely plug right there. <laughs> I like the fact that the Valor took a risk. Go ahead and answer back and let the soul know that, hey, anything you can do, we can do as well. We're not going to concede anything. Make sure that both sides of the ball are fully focused and sharp. Special teams is a great place to exploit a team. Remember, earlier the Philly kind of exploited us and took advantage of us. That's how they were able to get that other possession. I have no problem with the Valor taking a shot there. If anything, this will help the Valor defense. There's less fuel to defend. Yeah, but the problem is they've got to make sure that they don't fall asleep and get lulled in the fact that the soul can right. use a running back right here. They're in the red zone. Like some people call it green for go. They're in a really crucial situation right here. The good thing is the defender, defensive backs don't have to worry about deep routes. What they do have to worry about are crossing routes, little windows that Shane Austin can try to throw into. So definitely expect these defenders to kind of tune in a little bit. And there you go, Wes, right up the side into the wall. Minimal gain there for the big guy, Jermaine Richardson. 270 pounds of him with a nice game. I tell you right there, not only is he 270 pounds, but he decides to elevate. Look at a little jump right there. I'm not getting in front of him. I'm just saying, that's not gonna happen. But give a shout out to John Law, the linebacker sitting at six foot, 240 pounds. He decided to get a little action in the number 88 in white. Then you get a look at Clint Dozell, the coach, as uh, looks like he's having a chat with Austin, sending in the play. Why the first thing we do is talk about helmet stuff? That doesn't make sense to me. Again, that's one of those things as you get closer to the goal line, offenses try to mix it up a little bit because going north and south is all you got to do. And the motion that gets you a head start almost isn't necessarily as beneficial this close in. Dump off, slips a man, one to beat, and Prince into the end zone and a little too much extra razzle-dazzle there almost almost lost that one. Oh, there is Prince. He's been a problem all day long for this Valor defense, able to be real elusive on the outside right there. You see, unable to make the breakdown as Belton. Darius just turns back inside and gets upfield, a little jump. Michael Knott gives him a little whatnot once he gets across the goal line. You can expect that. Of course, being a little dissatisfied at a broken tackle, but that just lets you know. In arena football, a broken tackle can turn into a touchdown on the same play. So you have to do your job. You have to break down fundamental football. Put your hands on a man. Bring him to the ground. If you can't get, bring him to the ground. And if he's against the wall, push him against the wall. Get him out of bounds. I don't know if it's the uniform colors or his size, but he he screams a little Steve Smith to me. He does have a lot of Steve Smith in him. I can definitely attest to that. All right, kick goes through. Philadelphia goes back up by two scores with 2:15 to go in this opening half. There you get another look at Prince. He's been doing some work today, catching some touchdowns, grabbing an onside kick. There is Prince putting in work between Prince and Reynolds. These are their two main receivers for the Philadelphia Soul. Again, as you know, right now, Coach Benji McDowell talking to his players about trying to figure out a solution to this. As uh, there you get a look at the Soul talking things over. As a... Uh, We'll keep it. We'll keep it right here in Philly. So 2:15 to go. As the Soul look to get back on top here, as the Valor look to rally, two-score game. Get a look at some of the fans. Gotta love the fans. <laughs> Man, one of my favorite parts about arena football: is bringing the kids out, letting them see the players, getting up close and personal. We see it right there. Jones able to go give a high five to some fans in the, in the corner. The access you have to players here is almost like what you have at a high school game. Yeah. At college, you can't even no. 
you know, <laughs> college, other pro leagues, it's impossible to, to get a second with any athlete. Arena football, I mean, you can get a, you can very easily leave a game with a selfie. Oh, yeah. Onside kick again off a sole player. It looks like the Valor got it back. And it didn't go 10. Didn't get the 10, so that's going to be Valor ball on the, looks to be like a five-yard line right there. I know Trevino. Trevino wants that back. Yeah. I think the Valor were expecting after last time, like, hey, you're not going to fool us twice. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. Excuse me. You know what I mean. Now I'm just messing <laughs> with that. I love messing up that joke because somebody else messed it up before, too. It's always funny. But, no, seriously, good job with the Valor being aware, being able to make the recovery. And now they've only got six yards to go. So the question is, what do they do with these next four plays? You got, if you're the Valor, you got to play with the clock. You can't give the soul another possession. You do get the ball back. So if I'm the Valor, I'm playing the clock game because you can get those two scores back on two straight possessions. And I love that. There's the kneel from Nelson. Get the clock running. Mm -hmm. I like it. And it's a little deep Madden strategy almost, but you got to get the touchdown if you're wasting plays too. Uh, look, it, it actually, we talked about the Cavs early and it reminds me of, you know, there were people murmuring like, hey, maybe, you know, the Cavs should lose a game and then come back home and win. And I'm, I'm of the school of thought, you win now. <laughs> so I don't like the needle play. I want to make sure that you go ahead and make that play. That could have been the difference maker. But again, I'm not coaching, so I will respect Coach's job. But I'm just saying. And of course, in arena football, you get that one-minute warning mm -hmm. like you do in the NFL uh, at two. So that'll stop the clock there. And I'm a technical guy. I want to try to find a way, especially when you've been trailing, mm -hmm. find a way to win. And Valor doing just that is... We will take a quick break and be back with the conclusion of this first half. Welcome back, Brian Kapoor here alongside Wes Hall. And Wes, late first half, a little okay. bit of a strategic difference of opinion between the two of us. Right now, the Valor, perhaps using what I was suggesting, milk the clock, try to get that one last possession, last score, you get the ball back to start the second half. Meanwhile, you want them to just score as quickly as possible. I'm like, I, I told you earlier, I can see nothing, so I don't <laughs> like giving up plays. Now you're setting yourself up with three plays to get into the, into the end zone against a sole defense that obviously, if you look at the scoreboard, they've done their job right now of trying to contain the Valor offense. I say go ahead, make the play. You know the clock's going to count down to one minute anyway. <laughs> you possibly could have gotten into the end zone. But again, I'm not coaching. That's Coach McDowell, so I'll leave the coaching to him. I'll do the talking myself. You would never want to play Madden against me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I would unplug. Nelson coming up and takes a knee. Basically, a, he... he goes down after a gain of about four. So the Valor have made it clear they are definitely playing the clock. They're definitely going to play the clock. And again, one of the reasons that Nelson's on this team is because he's a dual threat, being really smart with the ball, bringing it down. He sees a tackle, go ahead and take, roll into the tackle, go down. Don't get caught in a situation that might create a fumble. And you see a timeout being taken right now by Philly. So definitely a different type of strategy than most are used to seeing in football. Right. Again, in the outdoor game, you tend to see more aggressive play calls. Sometimes when you're in the red zone, they'll yeah. just stack everybody inside and try to run downhill on you. But here, the Valor are trying to figure out different ways to try to get the defense out of position. You took a knee on the first down. You decided to break it down and run on a QB, a de designated excuse me, QB you scramble on the second down. So now here comes third down. You got to figure out. Something's got to get. For sure. I mean, it's almost like the Bri Bri Brian Westbrook strategy that the Eagles use. Um, 
I was going to say a couple of years ago, but it has to have at least been a while at this point. Yeah, it's been a couple of years. A couple of years. We're getting old. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I was in college when that happened. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'll tell you what, though, I'm looking forward to talking about the uh, playoff picture as we look at it, the way the season has gotten so far, because, you know, we're going to do that at halftime. And there's just, first of all, there's a rule change and stuff. It's kind of cool, though. And is that offsides? Good offsides on the defense. Great job uh, by the Valor holding their composure. That's an offsides on the defense. So a couple free yards and a first down. I'll so, take it. So playing the strategy game with the numbers working. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leave my cynicism out the door. <laughs> There's no way you could have dictated that. But anything <laughs> that we can get, we'll take right now. I, I, really, I'm, I really think the Valor are going to score in this game. Keep an eye on Gray in the slot, and then Neil. So we are going hard on the strategy. This is fun. I like it. You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> Why are we taking knees? I get it. I know you don't want to give Philly the ball back. I get it. But you've got to score here. Even worse than that, if you ever played me in Pokemon back in the day, oh I would gosh. sand attack you, take out your accuracy, Dude. use Harden, and just wait for you to beat yourself. I'm I was the, the most annoying type of player. I'm from the old school trip the cord and unplug the game <laughs> crew. If you play me petty like that, I'll just quit, man. But no, back as far as the game is concerned, I know the strategy behind it is to you're right there on their doorstep, kill the clock as much as you can so that way you go in the half with only a one touchdown differential. What I'm concerned about is, this is football. There can still be a fumble. There can still be an interception. There can be a sack, loss of yards. Any of those things can happen. So you've got to make sure you take the opportunities that are given to you while you have them. So they're trying to figure out who exactly called the timeout. There you get a look at Clint Dozell. I don't think we've ever seen him smile. I've never seen him smile. Ever. But he's a good coach. Just <laughs> never seen him smile. I think that. Oh wait, did he see one? Oh, that's. Oh, that, <laughs> no, that's the frown. The frown is a good smile. Team. That's what that. Play is. Good okay. team. Did, did you good can see team. them getting coached up right now. The full defense trying to figure out where the offense of the Valor is going to try to exploit a weakness right there. You can see now. One thing in the arena football, you can't stunt. So you're not going to get any stunning from the defensive line. But it's really making sure that the Mac linebacker knows which gap to come downhill in. And your Jack linebacker can only stay in the box. So it's really about anticipa eh, anticipation, <laughs> anticipation of what the Valor are going to try to do. If the Valor are going for a jump ball type of thing, you're mm -hmm. going to look for Reese. He's the tallest receiver. Yep. Um, but I would look for something quick, a, a slant, a, uh, a post, something where the receiver is just making one move and getting open. Nelson, will he try for the end zone? He does. Is that picked? It is. The Soul take it away. And Soul crushing on that one. A tough finish to that series. Larico Stevenson with the snap. Larico Stevenson. I told you he is a guy you got to keep your eye on with Soul defense. Right there, Nelson should have just taken it, tucked it, and ran it in there. But again, that's why I was saying on the previous plays, when you have opportunities to score, you take them. You do not wait. You do not take for granted that you will have the ball more than you think you do. Just Two be, knees taken. Just because that was the outcome doesn't make me or the dollar. Right? Oh, man. And there's 25 seconds left on the clock. So, the so you get nothing, and they get the ball back. Man, the dollar got to get a big stop here. Oh, and there it was. That was nearly picked off at the line. Big Jake Payne, baby. Looking a little Six, like four, 275, putting his hands up, man. Well, J.J. Watt type I, of action. I love Jake that Payne. Down. I love what he does on the field. I remember last year when they were putting the team together, Jake Payne was actually about to go to a different league, and he saw the opportunity for the Valor, came out, had a great tryout. Coach put him on the team, and he's been nothing but productive the entire time he's been on this roster. Great play by Jake Payne. You're the Valor. You cannot allow another score before half here. Austin drops back. Is that picked? No, it was dropped on the wall. That was huge. 
Oh, that was Belton just losing the handle. Oh flag my is gosh. down. There's a flag on the field, but Tracy Belton read that play like a bedtime story. Oh my gosh. Let's see here. Sideline warning on the defense. Oh, so that is inconsequential to the play on the field. Tracy Belton had what we call sometimes too much real estate. He read the play. He saw the ball. He's just like, all I have to do is catch it, and he didn't. Now, if I were to make a joke, it would be like, that's why he plays DB. However, all kidding aside, that's a play that Coach McDowell knows that he wants back. You could see it on his face. He's like, oh, my God. You've been in that position. Man. How difficult is that play despite how easy it looks? Uh, it's difficult because you know the glory that awaits on the other side of it. Sometimes that's actually what makes you drop the ball. <laughs> Austin sets up. Forced out. Looking to loft it. Still with it. Slips a man. And will find safe haven at the wall. Eight seconds to go and turns a safety into a first down. Jake Payne was there. You see him rip inside. Coming in motion. Almost had him right there. Couldn't quite get his hand on him. Alvin Ray Jackson can't get a hot wrap on him. Tracy Belton right there in the corner. Man, two great missed opportunities for the Valor defense. And now it's a first down and eight seconds to work with. Man. Keep an eye on that play that clock. Bad. It's down to 10. They got to get this snap off real quick. Three seconds. They aren't going to get it off. And there you hear the whistles. That should be a delay of game unless there's a timeout. Delay of game. Which is crazy to say, in arena football, a delay a game, the yardage lost, actually works in your favor because it just gives your receivers more room to run downfield. <laughs> but I, as we talked about the previous play, as much as it hurt the Valor's defense, you have to respect what Shane Austin was able to do to stay on his feet and continue moving his legs and make something positive out of that play. That should have been a safety, but here they are again. Keep an eye on night number 21 at the bottom of your screen for the Valor. Eight seconds. Up the middle, that's Prince again, slips a man. Towards the 10, can he go all the way? One second, that will be the final play. So the Valor rally to the ball, end the half without allowing a score in that tough position. And we will head into the locker room with a 28-14 game. Take another look at this, and Wes, you were cringing. Darius Prince has just been an all-star today. I can't even put it any other way. Fortunate for the Valor defense, let him get downfield, keep him in front, push him out of bounds. The clock was the extra defender on that play. And the yeah. Valor were fortunate to come out without any extra points being put on the board. Looked like he was nearly going to pull a Tyreek Hill. So halftime now, 28-14. We'll be back with more at halftime to talk about the playoff picture.
Welcome back, where the Washington Valor trail the Philadelphia Soul 28-14. I'm Brian Kapoor alongside Wes Hall. And Wes, the one thing about the Arena League is everybody makes the playoffs. It's a little bit of a different format yeah. than you might be used to. And of course, with the AFL, they don't do anything conventional. No, no. Normalcy is not here. Not at all. But like you said, it is about a picture that we need to kind of paint for those because, frankly put, it's a new way of doing things. So let's go ahead and break this down so that way everybody kind of understands. All right. So first things first, it's a two games home and home situation. All right, and that'll select uh, actually the highest seeded team of each matchup will select their home game weekend in the playoff series. Then if the same team wins both games, this is important, if the same team wins both games, they move on to Arena 31. Now, if the series ends in a 1-1 tie, the team with the highest aggregate score is going to advance. What that basically means is points matter. If you win one game by one point, the other team blows you out, that's going to be a loss. Yeah, so you really have to make sure that you put up points, period. Now, let's look at the seeding of this because, frankly, that's important. Remember, yep. the home team's got to be able to, the highest seeded team gets to select their home game. So as things stand right now, the brigade who had a big win against Albany last night are sitting at number one with six and two. The Empire, again, who have really kind of impressed the entire league, shocked everybody and come in at five and three. And then, of course, the Soul followed by the Valor. So as it looks right now, Baltimore and Albany get to pick their first games against Philly and the Valor. Now, they also, the higher seed could defer. They could defer. So, excuse me, at least he's cracking. Go Cats, all Cats. <laughs> <laughs> they could defer. But it's just really about... The points that you put up on the board. At the end of the day, you determine your own destiny. You've got to score. you got to win, but you also have to score. Now, we talked earlier in the game about the fact that arena football games are not low-scoring events. Actually, kind of reminds me of uh, uh, the high school basketball score, per yeah. se. So expect some of the scoring to be in that range. But I think it's going to be the difference between four and five points between determining who's actually uh, going to be able to advance. It's going to be fun. I love that everyone goes in and that scoring and kind of style points matters yeah. a little bit. If you if you went on last second field goal, fine, but you better come out and win your next game or, or lose by one. Yeah, <laughs> you have to make up that point differential because arena football, excuse me, the arena bowl is on the line. Arena bowl 31. Now, Philly's won it for the past two seasons. All right? Philly's won the arena bowl the past two seasons. They just won a Super Bowl this past season. If you're any of these other teams, you cannot let Philly have another parade. It's just not going to be possible. The Valor could, in this <laughs> setup right now, as crazy as it sounds, I know it almost feels absurd, like, wait a second, everybody makes the playoffs. If the Valor controlled their own destiny, how crazy would it be <laughs> for the Valor, who are right now 0-7, get their act together, walk into the playoffs, get two big <laughs> wins back-to-back, -back, and walk away with an Arena Football Championship? That, that sounds pretty good to me. I mean, D.C. is a parade town. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't been a sports parade town, and the Caps are kicking that off on Tuesday. Yeah, it's going to be really big live coverage of that on NBC oh, Sports Washington. And that'll be fun, but if we can just have all the sports parades, I'd be really happy with that. I'm fine with that. I'm totally fine with that. I mean, look at these Philly fans. You see them in the arena. Like, <laughs> my man's sitting there huh. with the Flyers shirt on. Do you think he's disappointed that they don't have a cup? It's okay. He doesn't even know. He just <laughs> knows the shirt fits, and Dad takes him to some games, and that's what it's all about. That's what sports <laughs> is about. I forget the young lady's name who was uh, at the Caps game, who Conley was trying to give her a puck, and one of oh, the yeah. guy kept giving it to the two little boys next to her. Keelan, I think is her name. Yes, Keelan. Thank you, my producer, Don. Um, and she was, of course, watched on screen at the watch party. She was at some of the games during the playoffs. That's what the game is about. It's about the next generation, showing them they can still have fun because football is a kid's game. Just grow men, get to play it, and we get to pay to do it. And so I just want to make sure that people know how fun it can be, including even on Facebook. We're going to definitely be having some more questions and conversations there. So if you haven't logged on to the Arena Football Fan, uh, excuse me, watch page, by all means, do so. More questions coming, more commentary coming as we kick off the second half of this Valor Soul matchup in Philly. After all of that, the Valor are going to be returning it. So they tried to go two for, they went over to start. So let's see if they can get one back here and then try to find that extra possession down the line. And again, that is such an intimate venue there, the, the Wells Fargo Center. I love it. Um, seen a variety of shows there. And 
there really isn't a bad seat, which is a lot of fun because it's such a such a tight uh, facility. Getting set. This one will be kicked deep. Off the net, Duvall catches it clean. Uh, needs to get out of the end zone and is taken down. I tell you, one of the hardest jobs in football, especially in arena football, is return man. That ball bounces off the net, and <laughs> Duvall uh, almost had a little interference from the fans. You know, I think they're going to put that ball, mark that at the two and a half. I'm not mistaken, should be right there for the for Nelson and this Valor offense to come out, but it's only a matter of time before Duvall breaks one. Yeah. And they've given him difficult balls to return, for sure. Yeah, which is what you want your kicker to do. Do not allow that return man any space to breathe. All right, let's see what Nelson can, op can do. He had a nice first half, but ended it with an interception. Looking deep to start us off just out of the reach of Gray. Looking for that big play with Reggie Gray, I told you. They like to start off with Nelson to Gray. That's the situation that they want to be in. And I'm glad they went ahead and took a shot downfield early. Make sure that this sole defense can't take anything for granted, thinking that the Valor are just going to come out and ticky-tack them downfield. Big matchup between Romaine and Gray. They had a lot of fun last week going head-to-head, -head, and here they are this week doing it again. So Gray will get a quick breather after that 50-yard dash. And that sprinter will get you. Just a note, Romain did hit his hand. Looking for a short gain, and that'll make it a third down and manageable. There you go, Josh Reese underneath. I told you he's a nice little situation. You're getting your inside guy, your possession re receiver in the game. Simple, simple little hole right there. It's underneath. Take that. Take those simple yards. Walk up field. Get those first downs. First downs turning to touchdowns. With receivers, it's find your hold in the defense, sit down. Yes. Get low. Show your numbers. Here you get another look at Reese. 13 right. minutes to go in the third, third and two. And the Valor blew a precious timeout here. Ooh, they're going to want that one back. Play clock got down to five seconds. Weren't able to do it. As you can see, Shane Stafford. QB play caller right there talking to Nelson. Just got too low in the play clock to get the, the entire route ran. And when you deal with the motion receiver, it's all about timing. So if you don't have time to actually get the offense set in the right motion, it can throw everything off. And of course, Nelson still new to the program. Yeah, yeah. Remember, this is only his second game for the Valor. Last week, he put up massive numbers. Seven touchdowns, two interceptions. Today, he's got one interception and two touchdowns to Chris Duvall. So pretty much on pace. Nice game. But again, you got to put points on the board. That's how you win games. Again, third down and two. Nelson looking for that quick strike, and that will be a souvenir. There you go. That's a fan ball right there. You can see a little bit of the frustration on Nelson's face. He knows where he wants to put the ball, just sometimes it doesn't end out the way you anticipate. Fourth down and two, an absolutely huge fourth down, down by two scores. Early third quarter, but you can't afford to give up possession here. Play caller and me wants to predict this play. I don't want to do it. I so know it. <laughs> My nerves are getting to me right now. Nelson longer drop, looking deep. Shot, touchdown, Valor. What a toss and what a catch. Reese, forget getting two yards, I'll get the touchdown. You talk about a risky play call. Fourth and two, the offense is struggling a little bit. Nelson, tall and poised, takes the shot downfield with Josh Reese. I told you, if you put the ball anywhere near him, he's going to catch the ball. Great route, great pass, touchdown Valor. That's the way you answer back. And coincidentally, it kind of makes up for the play call at the end of the first half that I was a little upset about. I feel like the Valor grabbed a piece out of the Souls playbook and brought it over to that side because that, that's what the Soul been doing all, all evening is that one is up and through. And you're right. They took two shots on that first series right there. The first play out of the gate to Reggie Gray, then the touchdown pass down there to Josh Reese. Valor's showing that they're not afraid to go deep. Sure, they would like to get some of those earlier underneath routes, possibly gotten a first down. 
Hey, who knows? We're gonna have more. We come back. Soul. Welcome back, Brian Kapoor here alongside Wes Hall. Yeah. And Wes, you're a little bit like Tony Romo, the broadcaster, predicting everything. And let's take a look at the keys to the game that you laid out because I think we've hit a couple already. Hey, right. I'm just saying, this is what I'm here to do. One at a time, I told you this earlier, one play at a time is what it's gonna take for this Valor offense and this entire team to stay in this game. And that's what they've done. I told you I was a little upset about the first half. But now, no big plays. We've gotta stop Darius Prince. He's been the problem maker. He's their big playmaker, so we've got to key in on him. I expect Michael Knight to really keep an eye on him, Tracy Belton as well. But the last point has been the most important one. <laughs> Playing an entire game, 60 minutes. It's not just a TV show, it's a philosophy. You've got to play the entire game. Do not give up, do not let one thing dictate what your next play is. If you get burned on a play, have a short memory, let it go. All right, let it go and move on. What about taking kneels and running clock? Don't ever do it. <laughs> don't ever take a knee. Go for the play that you have right there. You can't guarantee you're going to get another one. Those were the keys of the game yes. brought to you by MedStar. As the teams get ready for the next kickoff, keep an eye on a potential onside. It definitely looks like the Soul have the hands team up for mm -hmm. it. Trying to trick them, kick it long. Man. Let's see what they choose to do with Pat Clark. Say one of the things that makes uh, special teams so dangerous in the arena is that anything can happen. Off the wall, loose wall. Valor had a chance, they get it. Do they in the end zone? They do. Touchdown Valor and we are tied up. Oh my goodness. What did I just say? Anything can happen. Josh Reese, the man with the plan to win today, picks up the loose ball in the end zone. I couldn't have drawn it up any better if I wanted, Brian. Look at this return off the net. And he just never possessed it. Straight off his arms, straight to the ground. And oh my gosh, you see Chris DeVault, the first man downfield. He's the return man and he's on the coverage team. Josh Reese, handy, right in the right place at the right time. Yes, I just predicted that as well. Anything can happen. Touchdown, Valor. A huge turn of events there. And Wes, I'm going to need some lucky numbers from you later. Is that uh, one goes not a, through? Not a problem, bro. We are tied <laughs> up. And Maybe your strategy of just score if you can instead of running clock wouldn't have been such a bad idea. I'm telling you, man, when you've mentioned Madden earlier, that's my philosophy. If you put enough points on the board, no matter what they do, the game's over. <laughs> score, 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 score. It's arena football. Just literally five minutes ago, the Valor were down. Two touchdowns. Now here they are. Tie ball game. Let's go. That was the Philadelphia Soul basically had a moment like you do in Madden where the game starts to hate you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden, that <laughs> mysterious fumble that yeah. shows up out of nowhere. You're like, wait a second. But nonetheless, the Valor, who have yet to win this season, are tied in the third quarter with the two time reigning defending Arena Football League champs. If you asked any of the players before the game, would you take being tied with them to this point? I'm pretty sure they would take that. Absolutely, but you also have to remember, too, the Soul came into this game four and three. They've been beat three times. Somebody knows how to beat them, and it's not a problem for the Valor to go ahead and look it up and say, hey, whatever's worked before can work for us, too. Vulnerability is something that everybody possesses. It's up to the Valor to exploit that. Do they go onside kick here? No, now I play it safe, kick it deep <laughs> and make them run a full series. Don't want to give up any cheap plays. Because remember, the, the uh, fullback for the Soul has been a problem today. Jeremy Richardson, so if you put them in short yardage situation, he can definitely be a problem. They will kick it deep. Off the net, this time higher off the net, so caught clean. Here come the Soul breaking away, and that will be an answer. Touchdown, 
Soul, what a return coast to coast, as that was a heck of an answer and a play there. Dwayne Hollis, but I heard there's a flag on the play. We'll see what the call is. Man. Hold everything, literally, because the soul did. That one will actually come back. I was. Wes, good spot man. on the laundry. I did not see the flag. Ooh, but. man. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and the Valor got away with being lucky on that play. As I said on the previous kickoff, anything can happen on special teams, and it is not unlikely in arena football for back-to-back -back scores to happen on special teams plays like that. So the Valor were very, very fortunate that Philly uh, committed a self-inflicted wound right there on the return. Let's see if we can locate this real quick. There There's it is. There's a clean blank. There it is. Right there back at the 10. And instead, a quick dump off first down, a little bit more, breaking free again, and safely out of bounds goes Darius Reynolds, the other Darius. The Darius twins out there being really productive, running kind of a shell route underneath. And I mean, look at that agility right there, able to stay on his feet, get to hurdle action in there. We might have put him on the track and field, see if we can get him on the Lincoln team. <laughs> But Darius Reynolds does a really good job of maintaining his poise and getting upfield. But really, the team taking the momentum from the last play. Yes, it did get called back, but it still was an emotional boost. Right now, the Valor have to do what I said was the second key to the game. No big plays. Limit that stop. In arena football, it's just so difficult to get a turnover on downs because you got to make four straight stops. Man. The easiest way is with a turnover. Let's see if they can force one here. Couple guys bit. It looks like the slot guy's open. And that was just overthrown. Both corners that were located right by Prince Man. stepped up and got blown by. That was just an errant throw. That should have been a touchdown. That should have been a touchdown, man. This Philly Soul offense, they've been poking, poking, poking. But here's the deal in the second half. Things have kind of slowed down a little bit. And the Valor are now in the picture. It's a tie ball game. You do not want to let an underdog team stay close with you because that's what you talk about a sleeper game. They can turn this into a W. Philly's got to be really cautious that the Valor don't get a little confident and maybe turn this into a loss for them at their home. You give a team hope, it doesn't end well. See the Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> got to stomp out that hope. And right now the soul has allowed the Valor to find a spark. Is big hit by the commish to clean that one up. Jeremy Richardson again getting the sneak underneath right there. And you talk about the commissioner, Gordon, hasn't had a lot of numbers in the stats book for tackles because he's a Mac linebacker, but he's the heart and soul of the defense, able to get there, make a big hit, and help contribute to bringing down the big fullback. Anybody who wanted to hit a fullback that size has to make a business decision. I'm going to. The, the refrigerator, I don't know which appliance I would attribute to him. <laughs> maybe, maybe the dishwasher. Yeah, yeah. The dryer. Ah, the dryer sounds pretty cool. I kind of like the dryer. So here we go, 9.05 to go. Third quarter, another slant, and that's going to be a walk-in touchdown scored by Darius Reynolds. So the other Darius gets it done, and that was too open there if you're the Valor defense. That's an obvious breakdown in coverage on the Valor defense. You can't leave anybody uncovered, especially right there in the slot like that. This is a simple one-step toss and catch. I mean, that's just backyard football. You don't even have to draw that one up in the sand. And Wes, I, I feel like I've heard Valor defensive breakdown from you multiple times today. Yeah, I feel like a broken record on it, unfortunately. but. Frankly, it's honest right now. The Valor defense has to do a better job at communicating pre-snap. They've got to do better at recognizing where the route potentials are going to be. There's only so many things that you can do. They've got to be able to communicate early so that way they don't get burnt late. Extra point up. It's good. Waiting for them to update the score bug, but I do believe it is 35-28. That would there be correct. As yeah. uh, there, the Valor going to have to climb back into this one. We'll be right back with more.
as we are back in Philly getting set for this kick. Valor looking to tie things up. They trail by a touch. Caught clean by Duval. He'll bring it out into the wall. Flag does come down. As it stands, it's an 11-yard return. It's going to be a holding the other way. And that'll be a half the distance back. Chris Duvall actually got a clean return on that one. Unfortunately, there was a hold on the play. So what can you expect? As we get set for third down and five. No, that is incorrect. It's first down first and ten. First and ten. I'm like, wow, yeah. third and five. That was, I was a like, fast well, did, I, did I miss something? Like, what happened there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, team kneels. Brian's getting rid of downs. I'm like, what is going to happen? Each team gets one play. <laughs> Nelson getting set under center. Let's see if they try to take another shot here. Drops back, he will, down the middle of the field, just out of Gray's reach. Gray did not know which shoulder to look over for that one. Man, he threw it into the rafters right there. Great job by Nelson to get it up, but again, going for Reggie Gray on that first play, unable to connect. You have to think eventually it's going to pay off. Yeah, I think Gray was expecting that on the outside shoulder, and Nelson put it on the inside, and that slowed him down. There you go. My coaches used to tell you, don't throw a kite. You know, you can't get one up in the air. It just kind of drifts away from you. There's a, there's a certain little finesse. You still get it downfield, but leave it just enough air for your receiver right there. The, the air conditioning took it away. That's yeah, true. <laughs> Breezy inside, Philly. Nelson, one of the quick hitter, goes deep again. Is that a catch? It's a catch! Oh, my goodness! Show him some respect. In, in the bench area, danger field. With the dangerous catch, it what? was right in the sole bench area. And the soul want to challenge us, but my goodness. Oh my gosh, I told you, you got to show the man some respect. Anytime you see the name Dangerfield on the field, you got to show him some respect. I think he just earned it there, and it, that better end up on a top 10. Somewhere, somehow, great play. Those are the kind of plays that receivers live and die for, because you want to show commitment throughout the reception. Look at that. Everybody's like, what? The refs are looking up. There's, I don't know if there's a camera angle to prove it otherwise. I do love that he just had his hand with the ball sticking yes, up. Yes, ball up. I got it. Look at this. Look at everybody on the Philly sideline real quick. Quick oh, snap. Man. Oh, boy. To the big guy, Rumble. Big and my man. goodness, I don't want to have to try to tackle him. Parker. I love Anthony Parker, man. <laughs> Anthony Parker, first of all, Anthony Parker is an offensive lineman at 6'6", 380 pounds. And you love, look at this, he's eligible, makes his chip block on the edge, catches the ball and gets upfield. If you ever have a chance before a Ballard game when they're at home, watch them during pregame warm-up, they practice this. They practice the big man getting the ball right there. Gets upfield, makes a move, makes a little shimmy right there, claiming himself as eligible. Man, I love this game. Anthony Parker with a great reception. See what the Valor can do. Last time they were this close, it was a turnover. Nelson looks to the outside. Gray, did he hit the wall? They say no. Touchdown, Valor. Uh-oh, with the shimmy. Reggie Gray with the shimmy. Woo, it's pretty. Big play, Reggie Gray finally gets on the board. I think he got that move from Ovi. I'm just saying, <laughs> man, it feels good to be right. Big play, Reggie Gray sticking with the play. The ball outside to Nelson. Of course, like you said, the bouncing never Ooh. touched the wall. Romaine assumed that he was going to hit the wall. You can't assume. You got to wrap up and There's make the There's the angle. The you saw no movement. Wow. Rep good was play. right on top of it. Reggie Gray shimmying back into a tie ball game for the Valor. Great job for him. That makes touchdown number 12 on the season. Three down from his mark from last year. That one is through, and we're tied again. And we have ourselves a barn burner in Philly. This feels good, man. This feels good for the Valor. No matter what, if you're an AFL fan, Valor fan or not, this is a good ball game. Check out Nelson with the, the high five action there. 35 all as you get another look at Nelson. Delivering it down deep. Man, let's look at that Duval play. Ball comes up, like you said, and all of a sudden you have seven referees. One in stripes. <laughs> The rest in slate and teal. All of them trying to make the call. 
Dangerfield just makes a highlight play for the season. Man, that's what AFL football is about. And we thought we saw one earlier this year with the, the was it the, uh, the brigade? brigade? Yeah, guy Landon Collins. Here? Landon Collins yeah. made the SC top 10 going over the wall in Baltimore in a game, if I'm not mistaken, was against the Empire. Yeah. Really big play. And here it is. Jared Dangerfield giving him a run for his money right there. But looking at this pass again, Nelson delivers it outside, and I just love the focus and concentration for Dangerfield. He knows he's going to get hit. Look at the fan, the woman in the background, hand over her mouth. Just, oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Is he okay? Yes, he's okay. He's got the ball. He got a tie ball game here. That, that's like when you're playing catch at the swimming pool, jumping in, in the pool, which you probably shouldn't be doing. Right. And you catch the football, you hold up the ball, you're yeah. still underwater, but you're holding got up it. the football. I still yeah. got it. That's exactly what they needed. Let's see if they can make a stop on defense and on teams, and they get one here. The cleanup there by Everett. I love Alvin Ray Jackson. He's been really impactful for this team. He came in two weeks ago and has helped the Valorap in so many ways. He normally plays a jack linebacker. Of course, you see him there on special teams. But what I love about that Valor touchdown right there, it's one, it's a great answer to Philly's previous touchdown. But two, it shows that the Valor can put together a winning drive. It just shows that they can actually control the ball, control the clock, and get down and get what they need out of each possession. That was a picture-perfect drive, and over the course of this game, we haven't necessarily seen Philly have a drive like right, that. Right, right. No, they've been trying to exploit those big plays, which the Valor have to limit. Don't be surprised if Philly takes a shot right here on first and ten. Shane Austin with the quick hitter. Loose ball, and... There's only so much you can do at that, but that was a great defensive stop there from the Valors. That was Belton with the knockdown. Tracy Belton knew where to be, attacking the ball player, actually kind of going for the knockdown, really. He wasn't going for the pick or the strip. He was trying to bat the ball out as Reynolds went for the catch. Good job by Tracy. As we get set, love this high angle. You get to see the entirety of the field. It's so funny. We talked about uh, the playoff picture. I'll, I'll, I'll update you on a little something here after this play. Austin nearly picked off again. And Knight was thinking end zone, but you got to take the ball with you. Oh, Michael Knight. They saw the window again. It's the same play that Tracy Belton jumped the route on. Look at Knight. Backed up, back pedal, great break on the ball. Just can't catch it. Coach McDowell in the background was like, oh, somebody's got to make a play on the ball. Yeah, and see, when you think about it, Brian, this is what happens when teams are allowed to stick around. Little plays start happening. All of a sudden, they start to smell an opportunity here. Hey, we're in this ball game. Let's see what Austin can do, second and 10. Down the middle, and that's a one hop this time. Skipping rocks across the field. Looking like a former Eagle quarterback, Donovan McNabb. Oh, there. man, that was a shot, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Darius Riddle's the uh, intended receiver on that play. But again, you have to think now that the Soul have seen their, one of their favorite routes is to kind of sneak along that wall. They've seen that route get jumped twice. You have to think that they're like, wait, we've got to readjust here. We can't keep doing this. A little stutter go, actually. Hey, it's only a matter of time before the Valor secondary, these DBs catch one of these balls and take it home. Tracy Belton almost jumped the route. Michael Knight jumped the route. Tracy Belton broke up a pass. The guys are smelling the ball. It's just a matter of really getting their hands wrapped around it and making a turn. And it looks like the Soul are going to be content to go to the fourth quarter tied at 35. So right now we're going to be getting set for that fourth quarter, all tied up through three. We will take a quick break and be back with more.
At the end of three, the Washington Valor and Philadelphia Soul are tied at 33 all. Welcome back in here. I am Brian Kapoor alongside Wes Hall. Again, 35-35. And right now, let's take a look into that playoff picture a little oh, bit. Man, so right now you got to look at this factor here. Brigader in first place, Empire in second place, Philly, then the Valor. The Empire could actually benefit <laughs> on the Valor getting a win right now. So moving these adjustments, again, these higher seed teams are the ones who are going to dictate the seeding for the playoffs. So there are playoff implications in this game. The Valor could really create some problems. And the Valor have been in their last four games. As yeah. you take a look at this, they really don't get blown out at all. And Wes, how hard is it for a team to learn how to win? You almost forget, this is an expansion team. We can't all be the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Too true. Everybody appreciates <laughs> that. But look at the May 26 game. That was the only one that was a little lopsided. But every other game this season has been within 10-point margin. These are close ball games, one-possession games. As a matter of fact, that Baltimore game came down to a huge stop by the Valor defense. They just weren't able to convert on the offensive side of the ball. So they're always in it. It's just a matter of them putting the pieces together at the right time to get that W. It all comes down to momentum catching fire at the right time. Everyone gets in the tournament, and mm -hmm. ever, in other sports leagues, you don't. And that's the goal, getting in the tournament. You're going to be in the tournament. Yeah. This is the point where you can maybe build some of that momentum, and let's see if they can start it right here at the start of the fourth quarter as Shane Austin goes under center for the sole 35 all. Austin looking. Sideline incomplete. Trying to do his best danger field impression, but can't haul it in. Again, targeting Darius Reynolds, whether it's Darius Reynolds, Darius Prince. These two guys are Shane Austin's favorite targets. Just a little outside, back shoulder. Here's the truth of the matter, though. He was actually open. Yeah. Had Austin given that a little more leg room, that could have been a six. And here you see what Dangerfield does. Dangerfield set the bar, or jumped over the bar, and caught the ball while, oh, yeah. while, while doing that with the bar. But Reynolds try, trying to find his answer, couldn't do it that time. I know Reynolds is getting frustrated. He's normally a little more productive in this game. He's only had one catch. And is that a Valor touchdown? Or safety? What happened? Touchdown Valor. They signaled touchdown. Nelson made the play. Now remember, here's what's crazy. When he first came into the AFL, he was actually a linebacker. All right, here we go. It's Nelson around center and into the end zone. So it was a touchdown. QB and keeper. Lost on that Reynolds play was, and with the change of the quarter, that was fourth down. Right, right. Yes, that's one thing people forgot about that. That was not just the first down. That was a fourth at the end of the, at the beginning of the fourth quarter. And so the that Valor was a TOD. have their first lead of the day, 42-35. Did we just say that? <laughs> the Valor have their first lead of the day. With the general on the field, Arvel Nelson. Big quarterback brought in in the second week to make a difference for this Valor offense and does it with his legs. So Washington with an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. A little extracurricular activity. I call that excitement. <laughs> it happens every once in a while. But again, remember, you're talking about being up against the two-time defending AFL champions on their home field, and you've been 0-7. This is what we wanted all year long, to be in a position to make a win, and the momentum that is built right now, this Valor team has to know that winning is right here for them to take. Yeah, all it takes is one. You gotta, in a lot of ways, relearn to win, and there you see it, and if anything, why wasn't that a, a roughing the kicker? I would have called rough and the kicker. I think the extracurricular activity was on the other side. Or, or a little conversation. <laughs> Clark had a little conversation with the referee there. He's, a, ki he's a kicker. He should have watched soccer, mm -hmm. learned how to, how to flop a little I was going to say, if you're talking to any example of a flopping, is the Academy Awards, because they got some really great actors on the soccer field. Flop Central. I think LeBron James trains in the offseason. <laughs> I'm sorry, too soon? <laughs> I mean, I hear he's pretty good with a broom. He is, yeah, yeah. Sweeping. Yeah. But I'm going to be honest <laughs> about this situation right now. The Valor have to focus and lock in. You're up. It's not a walkaway game. 
Same rules apply. Pizza Don't let any big plays happen. Oh, no, you kick that ball deep. <laughs> kick it deep. So we're ready for it out there. Off the net, not much of a bounce. And that's going to be wrapped up inside the five. No, maybe the six. Yeah, buddy, Tracy Belton getting there first. And you have to appreciate a team that knows how to swarm the football. Great group tackle from everyone on the coverage team, getting downfield, staying in their lanes. That's another thing that people forget about special teams coverage teams. It's incumbent upon them to stay in their lanes, know their assignment, and get to the ball carrier. And hopefully that translates into the defense that's about to do the same thing. Now, I tried to, I think I've missed one prediction today so far, so I'm, I'm pretty good right now. I'm like nine out of 10, which is fair. Uh, but you wanna make sure if you're the Valor secondary to watch Shane Austin and this sole offense, because they're definitely gonna try to take another shot down and see if they can demoralize the Valor defense. Again, we are getting that feed, so the mic, that is not Wes Hall. That is not me, no. no. <laughs> so 42-35, seven point game, Valor leading. 13-13 to go. Shane Austin looking to rally the troops for the soul. Looking deep again. Reynolds catches it, gets back up, and will be put back down. So nice play there to start off the drive for the soul. Man. I tell you right there, Fred Obi makes a great tackle out of San Diego because Reynolds finally getting into the game, making the catches that he wants to. But no matter what happens, you got to play through the play. Yeah, Reynolds didn't make any catches in the first half. Right, no, been kind of quiet. Had a lot of looks, just nothing that actually connected, and there he is fighting for it. The Dariuses, I guess, play a half each. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to go. First and 10, Austin. Near side, has a man, hit the wall, wasn't touched, so that does not count as out. Picks up a couple extra yards. Sean. Kalina Muku with the reception. Now, last week when these two matched up, he was a problem for this Valor team. Today, he'd been kind of quiet, rather pedestrian game. Had a couple of looks, first reception of the game. Tracy Belton there for the tackle. Yeah, because I'm telling you right now, I'm glad that just between me and you, I'm glad he's been mildly unproductive today because his name is really hard to say. Why do you think I let you take it? <laughs> <laughs> thought you were being so nice. No wonder. That was a selfish motivation there. But at least you're honest in that play. You're my friend. You can see Coach Dozel trying to draw up something real quick. We've got 20 seconds left on the shot, shot clock. Play shot clock. Hey, <laughs> yeah, we're in the, inside the arena, you know, yeah. play shot. Getting set. Shane Austin, quick hitter over the middle, wide open, slipping a man inside the five. And that's a zone defense breakdown. You find the soft spot right in the middle. That's Aaron Washer right there out of Michigan State, the rookie. And remember, Washer was a problem early in the first half. He caught a wide open corner route touchdown. Here he is, the middle of the field, middle of the zone, just gets there, turns around and sits down, and makes a great catch. Tracy Belden giving up a few pounds, getting taken along for a little bit of a ride right there. But I mean, come on. That's what quarterbacks dream of. Drop back in the pocket and throw a dead dart 15 yards in the middle of the field. Easy pitch and catch there. Looks like one of the Valor players are a bit shaken up. Salvin Ray Jackson, the Jack linebacker, was shaken up on the play. Oh, he got taken out on a block, the Ooh. backside block. Ooh. That's the type of play you don't see in the NFL anymore. That no, they actually no. outlawed those crackbacks. Man, I know some, some of the more aggressive fans like to see them, but as a player, you want to protect yourself, and nobody wants to get hurt at all. So. Good thing for the league to change the rules to protect players. But as you said, looking back on the replay with Washer going upfield, you might see it on the right side of the frame, right, boom, right there. A little keyhole action. Hopefully it's just a win knocked out situation. Yeah, he's a tough guy, Alvin Ray Jackson. He'll definitely be back in the field. First and five. Handoff. Touchdown, Soul. Is same guy once again, Washer gets it in. Aaron Washington's second touchdown on the day, one in the air, one, one by air, one by, uh, by land. Here he goes again, 6'3", 205, really smart play call from the soul. Kind of catch the Valor defense a little off, not expecting an in-around run like that. And you've seen this happen with the Empire, they run a play like that, as well as have the Brigade, really trying to exploit defenses, putting wide receiver, loose guys, more of your Z-backs, 
into that running back position. Since in arena ball, you don't have a tailback. You typically have fullback. So if you want to try to create a, an impromptu tailback, you use a receiver in motion and give him the handoff from the backside. A little Tavon Austin type of look. Very much so. 10.30 to go. And we're tied. 42 all. 10.23 to go in this ball game as uh, I believe we will step away and be back with more. And we are still tied 42 all, but yeah. guess what? We still have more arena ball to go if you're the Val. You're tied today, but a couple more wins could be on the horizon as you take a look at the upcoming schedule. Well, I'll tell you, looking at this schedule right now, you have to look at next week's matchup. Not only is it a family rival between, you know, the Monumental Sports teams, between the Brigade here and the Valor, but the Baltimore Brigade are ranked number one in the league right now, all right? Remember back in April 13th, they lost in 56-61. So they're definitely going to try to get some revenge there. And this game alone is definitely going to make the next time Philly plays the Valor a very big matchup. But then that June 29th game, that's against Albany. And they are no slouch by any means of the matter. They have Joe Hills on their team. They got a receiver by the name of Micah Jones, who is absolutely electric. These guys play really great football. And, of course, July 7th, Another matchup against Baltimore. No matter what the records are, you got to throw them out when these two teams get on the field with each other. So I'm looking forward to see the next four t times these teams take the team. Of hey. course, the upcoming schedule brought to you by Mars, and those last three games all brought to you on Monumental Sports Network. So it's going to be great stuff, and we'll have all that action oh, yeah. right here for you. Big games, big <laughs> matchups, big coverage. That's what it's all about, arena football. And I just love the fact that here in the stadium, People come just like they're in Philly. They come watch the game. You hang out afterwards. You get to get the autographs and pictures with the kids and whatnot. That's what it's all about. Now, do you get to sign autographs? The onside kick. And again, the soul come down with it. And oh, my goodness, the Valor. You can see the disgust on the players. And at some point, you'd think you'd be ready for it. You've already given up one. They have to be prepared for that. Great way of disguising it by the soul. It's that back, it almost feels like a heel kick. And Jared Dangerfield makes so many plays on offense. Makes one mistake on special teams. He can catch the ball in the third row, yes. but couldn't handle the onside kick. Man, oh man, I know he wants that one back. If you're the Valor defense, this is that quick change. It wasn't yeah. a turnover, well, I guess it was a turnover. Um, but right now you got to make a stand and right now if you're the soul this is a huge chance I'm defending deep on this one Austin looks for the wall can't find his man looking for that back shoulder again unable to get on the same page remember this is Shane Austin's first week with this team so some of those routes are timing routes and it's just about familiarity between quarterback and receiver definitely looking to get that one back now the best part about that play for the Valor defense was that the coverage was over top. I don't know what the call was on that. We'll definitely check on it. Looks like it is a penalty that results in a first down. Mm. So regardless of the call, it will be a sole first down and some added yardage. So they'll get another crack at this one. You got the Darius twins out there on the field. Six and seven. Prince and Reynolds. Prince, the motion man, 
trips to the bottom now through the slot, a little bump. Going deep anyway, off his fingertips. Fred Obi with what might be the play of the game so far. An absolutely phenomenal defense, sticking with Darius Prince outside and just perfectly times it, gets his backhand inside, doesn't use his inside hand to try to come over top, uses that backhand, extends, goes for the location of the ball, makes an absolutely fabulous play. That's the type of play that can get your defense going and get some confidence built, and hopefully they can turn this into a really big defensive stand. Second and 10. Shane Austin again getting set, has his motion man looking for the screen. Haven't seen one of those yet, and a little flip rama Nice defensive play there by Jackson, taking none of that. I told you Alvin Ray Jackson was an athlete, man. Told you he was serious and focused about what he does. Went out of the game a little bit, a couple plays ago. Able to come back in and just absolutely refuses <laughs> to let Jeremy Richardson get by him. Jeremy Richardson has been laying All 270 yeah. pounds yeah. of Richardson. Oh, yeah. Alvin, Alvin Ray Jackson's only 6'1", 200. But when you're motivated, you can move mountains. And run marathons. There you go. <laughs> Two, or excuse me, 7.25 to go. Big third down, third and four. Looking for that. That's thrown behind, and that'll be incomplete. So perhaps the biggest play of the game to this point upcoming, fourth down and four. Looks like uh, Darius Reynolds not happy with the tackle Fred Obi made against him, but hey, it's a DB's job. Separate the man from the ball. Don't get mad because you got here. It's part of football. You can see it right here on the replay, just a quick little in route late behind him. Obi does his job. Now, some coaches would say definitely try to keep your head up because you could have avoided the contact on that, and I would totally agree on that. But this has turned out to create a really huge play for this game. Right now, fourth and four, and you can see Reynolds kind of nursing a little tingle right there. And he's the motion man. So with the Valor draw up defensively, Austin looking deep, it's picked off! The Valor taking away the play they needed to try to save the day. A late flag. Obi with the take takeaway. And there was a late flag. I believe it happened after the interception. Let's see what the call is. Oh, my gosh. Potentially a horse collar. That's the play they needed. After the play now. It's after the play. Look at the replay. And you can see Obi check hand and just undercuts the route. Now I'm gonna be totally honest. Knowing that you had a hobbled receiver, they never should have thrown the ball at Reynolds after that previous play. He got up and stood there and gave attitude because in all honesty, he was hurt. <laughs> That's what the attitude was about. He was stalling. Gets back in the formation and gingerly walks back into motion. And you could see it's like laboring, trying to get into the route. He should have never been targeted for that play. Great job on Fred Obies recognizing the weakness and undercutting that route. Valor ball. So we will take a quick break and be back with more.
Welcome back, Brian Kapoor here alongside Wes Hall, and mm -hmm. still tied, yeah. this time 42 all, and Wes, our, our guy Reggie Gray is having himself a pretty good day so far. Big play Reggie Gray on pace to pretty much overdo what he did last year. Last season he had 15 touchdowns for the brigade, now he's on the Valor team. Yep. Had 11 coming into this game. He's already got one touchdown today. I'm expecting something very special from him in this next possession. We got a great, great turnover in that last play from Fred Obi. That's the type of juice you need. That's the type of momentum that turns the entire team electric. The offense comes out energized. Let's go. As Nelson has it, looking for his man, has him. That's Triple T Tolliver with the catch. TT saw daylight on that one. You can see the frustration. He's like, that's my bad. Great catch, had a nose for the end zone. He knew if he made one more move, he could have gotten away from it. Great pass by Nelson to really find him on that. Actually, back shoulder had Nelson led him just a hair more. A lot of more could have turned out on that play, but good job. At TT, you're doing what he does. <laughs> the wiry veteran, 41 years old, still putting up numbers in the, professional sports. The Reggie Gray Red River sat there has been fun to watch today, too. 5.23 to go, Nelson and that one gets thrown into the turf. You know what? As much as that feels weird that that pass was low and outside, that's all right. It's, it's a safe ball. Safe ball if you're going to either throw it to your man or throw it to nobody. But again, quarterback knows the rules. you got to stand tall in the pocket like that. You can't depend on your, your arm strength when you're stepping away and backwards from your receiver. You prefer to step into him. All right, 4.53 to go. Nelson has his man in the slot. That's Gray, and that'll set up a third and short. Is there a flag down? There is. There's going to be a face mask in that one. I saw that one from here. Face mask on the sole defense. Set him up for first down. Good call, Wes. Dang, man. Dang, I'm here all day, baby. Try the salmon. I'm a veal guy. Oh, come on, you're <laughs> killing me. <laughs> so the Valor get the defensive stand yeah. after giving up the onside kick, and now they are a couple yards from the end zone. Absolutely huge, as you see Reggie Gray. There's the face mask. And yeah, it was. Wes. No knees, no <laughs> kneels, no knees. You go in, you score right now, you pull up. Your, your defense has done a great job of making the stops they need. Reward them with the touchdown right now. Put yourself up and, and basically trust them. They give it to Gordon, and he'll get maybe two. Commissioner Jimmy Gordon lowering his shoulder, getting some positive yards. Man, you can feel the buzz in the Valor sideline. They know how close they are to making a difference on this season. It's just a matter of playing 60 minutes. This is what we talked about, the third key to the game. Finish this football game. So is this the point where you start to run down clock? No, <laughs> we do not run down the clock. <laughs> 335 to go. Nelson gonna keep it himself. He scored once this way, pushing, and that'll be a minimal gain. And getting the positive yards should be down to the three, possibly the two. A little extracurricular down there in the end zone between Deontay Savage. Not happy when it comes to protecting his quarterback. Didn't want him taking any hits, but Arville Nelson, the big quarterback, able to move the pile outside on the design quarterback sneak. So here they are, back in the two again. Wes, do you give it to Nelson again, the big quarterback? Just have him get low because you do have two downs to play with. You can also kick the field goal. I want to, I'm, I'm more petty than that. I take a note out of Philly's book and give them sweet revenge. I take Reggie Gray in motion and turn him into my tailback. Sneak him into the end zone. They go with Nelson and set up the gut. He's in. Hey. Touchdown, Nelson. And the Valor retake the lead with 2.35 to go. And the clock still rolls as Arvell Nelson rolls across the goal line, assisted by the commissioner, Jimmy Gordon. Your leaders on defense and offense on the same side of the ball, making a push for glory. You can tell how much they want this. This is a team that is refusing to give in. They know victory is right here, and they will not be denied. Look at that. <laughs> Shades of Matt Liner and Reggie Bush. My gosh, it does remind you of that. This is exactly why Coach McDowell brought him in. You needed a big quarterback that's able to get you those crunch yards, the crucial game yards, right there at the goal line. 
And again, you do have the one minute clock stoppage as that one goes through. So the Valor up by a full touchdown with 1.53 to play. And we will be back with the conclusion of this one. 1.53 to go in Philly. Welcome back, where the Washington Valor lead the Philadelphia Soul 49-42. Brian Kapoor here alongside Wes Hull. And Wes, the Valor are a defensive stop away from their first win of the season. And the guy that they're going to have to slow down is right there, Darius Prince. He had a huge first half. Huge. Um, I, I'm not sure where he's been in the second half, though. A little wide in the second yeah. half, and that's kind of, you know, I don't really know what we can attest that to. Obviously, Wash has been productive. And then they had to get the other Darius, Darius Reynolds, involved as well. There's only one football on the field. But you cannot count Darius Prince out of the game. you got to keep an eye on him. And it's really on the defense now. Valor defense have to make the stand. This might be the, the swinging factor for their season right here on this defensive possession. Pat Clark will send it deep. And that is kept in. And that's how you want to start off if you're the Valor. Four-yard kick return. Brought up by Larico Stevenson, who had a key interception at the end of the first half. Yeah, they show a lot of love to Reggie Wilson, defensive lineman who actually was on the coverage right there. He and Tracy Belton getting downfield, wrapping up. They felt the sting of that earlier return, even though we got called back. Guys, don't forget that kind of stuff. They do not want to get exploited like that again, and now you can feel it in the air. Those Philly fans are a little nervous right now. The Valor have done their job so far. And of course, on a change of possession, that does not stop the clock. The only nope. thing that stops the clock now before a minute will be the minute warning. That's it. Or a time out. So we roll on. Clock is an extra player, essentially, as that is going to be short completion. But I'll, I'll let you handle that one. Kalena Moku. Yeah. Yeah, Kalena Moku getting involved. That's his second catch of the day. He's been targeted four times, but that was his second catch of the day. Actually, a little behind him on that one, Austin. Could have let him just a pinch more, but all the same, Philly Soul will take that completion and move upfield. That takes it down to the one-minute warning. Second and ten when they come out of the stoppage. And if you're the Valor, force them to nickel and dime you up as we will be back with the conclusion of this game. Valor lead by seven. Welcome back, Brian Kapoor here alongside Wes Hall. And this one has been a pretty good one, hasn't it, Wes? This has been exciting. This has been fun. I'm so happy that the Valor are right where they want to be in this football game. Let's break it down. This whole uh, game summary right now brought to you by Mars. First quarter, kind of, you know, not it up there, but you saw Philly stepped away in that second quarter, putting up 21 quick points. Going into the half, the Valor took a couple of knees that I definitely did not agree with. But, hey, it's all right because the third quarter, 21 quick points unanswered points and adjustments. That's what it's all about, making the adjustments. Look at that fourth quarter. When the game is on the line, the Valor have put up 14 points in the fourth quarter. That's been the difference maker throughout their entire season is what happened in the fourth quarter. 
Yeah, the third quarter, what they did, they got the touchdown uh, with uh, the receiver catching the, in, the, in the bench area. Yes, yes. And yes. then they got the quick turnover off the kickoff, mm -hmm. and then another Nelson quick score. So they had things kind of go their way. Right. And now they need to lock in on defense. You got to get all hands on Darius Prince. Yes. You cannot let him beat you. Can't let him beat you. And don't forget that big interception by Fred Obi is what set this whole thing up these last couple of minutes. Now it's all on the line. Valor defense have to make a Valor stand. Stand with Valor. There you go. There Hashtag go. stand with us. One minute to go. Shane Austin looking for a chunk. It's caught by Prince. And he is into the end zone. And Philly, what an answer. There are 52 seconds left. Pending the extra point, we could be looking at a tie game. We literally just said, you have to watch Darius Prince. I knew that. You knew that. My grandmother, she's been in glory for at least the past seven years, and she knew that. I don't understand what they didn't do on that play. They had to account for this man. He ate him up in the first half. Oh, my gosh. Just able to cheat underneath. I know what happened there. Michael Knight saw him sitting in the same zone. He thought he was pretty much washed out of the play. That ball actually should not have been thrown. You had two receivers in the same spot. It's completely understandable how Knight backed off. Wow. Huge extra point, high snap. It's blocked! The Valor with the block, they'll scoop it up. And a huge turn of events. The Valor lead by one and are 52 seconds away from a win on the year. My goodness, the high snap caused all of that. Brian, I can't take it, man. Your emotions <laughs> are killing me, brother. My voice is gone from a Stanley Cup win, and now the Valor are playing with my emotions by making blocks on extra point attempts. Please. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This is crazy. <laughs> I had to take the hat off for a second. You can see why I was wearing it. My hair is just going all over the place. Between, this, between the caps in this game, I, oh I lost my gosh. the hair I had. Oh, my gosh. This is what it's all about, though, folks. You wanted to see some great action right here in Philly. The Valor have been fighting all season long to get this type of win under their belt. If they get this, this can change the tide of the entire season. Look at that. Fred Obi with the recovery on the, on the extra point block. One point differential. We talked about how one point it will matter throughout this season. Of course, the playoff implications. Look at what happens on this return. It's a simple kick. Goes up, but who gets the penetration Payne. inside? I think Payne got the block. Payne and Jake Law inside. Oh my gosh, excuse me, John Law. I want to make sure I get it right. Jake Payne and John Law inside, using their height to their advantage. Payne 6'4, Law 6'0. Both these guys just penetrate inside. You got to show a lot of love to John Law, representing Appalachian State down in the South. I know we're getting excited. Yeah. If you're the Valor, yeah. alert onside kick. Alert onside kick, you better believe that. They've, oh, yeah. They've given up two. Alert on sidekick. But don't forget this rule that they implemented in the AFL this year. You don't have to do a progressive play. Valor can get this ball and kneel, 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 and it's over. Yeah. I do believe Philly has three timeouts. Though. I know, but still, take a knee. Now you can take oh, a knee. Oh, okay. Now, now I'm allowed to. Now knee. you okay. can take a knee. Now you can take a knee. <laughs> Trevino has already kicked two that have been recovered. Oh, they got to do it. They got to score. Come on. Philly has to get the ball back. Here it comes. All or nothing. And it's gotten by the Valor. Give him some respect. Jared Dangerfield with the hands. Yes. Oh, man. Whew. All the hands going out, of, going out of bounds, grabbing an onside kick. He has been amazing. And, and Wes, huh. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel a little happy for you because you've endured a lot with this team yes. this year. Yes. It started off right here. As, As Reynolds uh, making big Reynolds plays. Reynolds made a bunch of big plays early. And look at that. There you get another look. They're doing so much. That right there, big man, of course, Jeremy Richardson, putting him on, putting it on the offense. Of course, Reynolds getting across the goal line right there. But I tell you, when I think about that reception of Jared Dangerfield right there on that onside kick, it reminds me of Rodney Dangerfield and back to school when he was able to make that triple dive off the high dive. Woo! We'll just be a straight dive forward. Tick, tick, tick. seconds. Tick, tick, tick. Let's go. Timeout called by the soul. Arvell Nelson keeping it on the sneaker. This is why you brought him in. A league veteran who's been in these situations before. You're confident to put the ball in his hands. He'll secure it. Help wind this clock down, like you said, 
Soul had the, the timeout they just took one right there. I almost wonder why he was available. Oh, because man. Because he has been stellar these last two games. There's a song. Uh, what a, I forget what, who sang it back in the day. Seasons change, people change. Well, same thing happens around here. We made some changes at quarterback. We found a man that was available, and we went and got him. And he's rocking my number, so I'm never mad at that if I trust him. <laughs> I'm Bill Nelson. Just know if, I, if they ever need to stand in for Nelson, I'll let him actually keep the number, and I'll, I'll set that. You're, you're, you're a little bit shorter than he is. No, I'm six five. We're both six five. I got him by five pounds. Though. He's okay. two thirty. I'm a little bit heavier than that. He's a we, crab. We need to go for a run. I know. I need to run. I need to run. What happens now is the clock needs to run out. Yes. So Valor can get this first win on the season. Forty-seven seconds left. All or nothing, baby. Let's go. You got Gordon behind. I'm guessing he's there to push. We got to score. Motion. Ooh. Nelson, and that'll be taken down again. Old rules, that would be a clock stoppage. Right. Current rules, clock runs, and that forces a timeout. Nelson, a little, shake, little shaking a little off of that. All right, so now we start to separate so the uh, shaft from the wheat. What's Big up? question, do we, do we throw or do we keep it on the ground here? If you throw this football, it's going to be a situation in this studio. <laughs> All right, I'm just here to tell you that now. You do not put the ball in the air against this team. Right now, you're seeing what they've done before. This is a two-time AFL championship pedigree team on, on, their, on the ropes right now. So we throw the slant. <laughs> right. <laughs> Be careful. We're going to throw a dig around. <laughs> no, right now... You work the clock. You get something positive out of it. Now, if you want to be sneaky, since you want to entertain throwing the ball, let's let's let me. I'll indulge it for a second. You keep Josh Reese, or no, better yet, Reggie Gray in the slot. It's a simple drop back, throw it to him two feet in front of you. That's what I would do if you're going to throw the ball. But here we go. Critical third and eight. Nelson does throw it into the slot to Gray. He lost the football. It is so ball, 37 seconds to go, and my goodness, the soul are not done just yet. They got the soul stone, and they have another chance to snap it. Are you serious? That cannot be. I just said, don't throw the ball. I just said, don't throw the ball, but if you're going to throw the ball, Oh, man, I've got to calm down. You didn't see this, but I will admit it. I'll throw myself under the bus. I just threw my hat halfway across the studio. This is crucial right yeah. here. I mean, oh, I mean the ball. We, we, we were jokingly talking about throwing. Uh, about, Don't throw. I mean, it was, the throw wasn't the problem. The holding on to the ball but part was the, the problem. problem. Don't take you. Look, the center snaps it. That's one person that touches it. The quarterback has it. That's two. That's already enough. In this situation, don't create a third. Don't create a third. Please, I mean, if you're the Valor, cover Prince. Oh, my gosh. 37 seconds to go. They're going for it. Into the slot has Reynolds, slips a man. Trying to go out of bounds. He does. I'll stop the clock at 30. And you can hear in the natural nat sound that we're picking up, they're going to Prince. You can hear Someone it. in the arena knows. Somebody knows. We all know. Look at this ball. Austin able to get it away from Reynolds underneath. You can feel the Valor defense kind of shelling off a little bit, trying to give up some yards, but nothing left. You got to protect the sidelines. Got to protect it. Tracy Belton working <laughs> on his. Uh, little, little, little LeBron flop there yeah, on Belton. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was wearing six. I'm telling you, LeBron's inspired so many people. 30 seconds left to go. Man. Shane Austin looking near side, quick hitter to Prince. Stays in bounds, does not get out. And that'll be a timeout. So I believe that was their last one. Huge defensive play there by Belton to keep them in bounds. And you have to think about the fact that the soul know they can still kick a field goal and walk out of here with a win. Yeah. So it's not just a touchdown. Play. With the arena football, you forget about you the forget field goal. You forget about the field goal. And you forget about the drop kick. I know they won't do a drop kick right now. You can see Philly able to get it outside real quick into the hands of Prince, who's been a problem all day long. Knight wraps him up and just starts driving his legs. Right now, if you're the soul, are you thinking kick or are you thinking touchdown? Uh, if I'm coaching, I go field goal. 
I'll take the shot. I'll take the shot. But I'm thinking field goal. I mean, it'd be cool to see the drop kick. Don't think we haven't seen it, but you know, still. All right, huge play, second and seven. Austin, end zone, it's picked off! The Baller gets it done. What a huge interception. And it's Ovi again. My goodness. And for all intents and purposes, the Valor Club is going to win one today. Oh. Check out Wes Hall doing the happy dance. Look. That is how we feel right Look. here. OV. With that. OV brought us the cup. OB is about to bring <laughs> us the first win of the season. Look at this. Unger cuts the route. That's what it's about. Tracy Bell is like, get down, go down, fall asleep on the floor. Don't let anything happen here. <laughs> Take a knee. Take four knees. I don't care what you have to do. Milk the clock and let's go home with a W. Oh, man, it's going to be a party tonight. Woo! At my house, at least. I don't know about anybody else, but we're having a good party. All we need is a clean snap. Just one. Just one. Just one. Do they pass the ball here, Wes? Man, look. <laughs> Somebody get some duct tape and put it on Nelson's hands. All right. That is a kneel. I don't believe they have to run another play. The clock will run out. And the Valor are going to leave Philadelphia with their first win of the season. Take a look at Nelson. What a job. Second game in a Valor uniform. Gets it done. Triple zeros on the scoreboard. And my man, Nelson, absolute standout performance. Couple by air getting it done by by the field. I do believe that he is a strong candidate for our player of the yes, game. Yes, I definitely say Alville Nelson is our player of the game. Winning is contagious. He should be, but he's probably not going to be. I mean, come on. We haven't even determined it. I, mean, I want him to be. Yeah. I want him to be. We want who him. Knows? Who knows? Who knows? We, we'll, we'll, we'll see what's we're, up. But We're going to sort it out. We're we'll going to sort it out because, honestly, back. there's so many different guys. There's so many different guys that have kind of contributed to this game. you got to thank Frank, Fred Obie, the dude, like. Obi is two interceptions that could have broken the game. We'll Obi. have more when we come back. The control room is perhaps on fire right now as they try to figure out <laughs> who our player of the game is. We'll be right back here on Monumental.
the Washington Valor take down the Philadelphia Soul 49-48. Brian Kapoor here alongside Wes Hall. And Wes, we've been smiling because of the Stanley Cup. Mm -hmm. And now you are smiling again. Yeah. The streak is over. Yeah. The Valor are victorious. And Wes, emotions. Single tear, feeling? baby. Single tear. No. <laughs> and, and, I, and yes, I am ecstatic about it. But honestly, this is a testament to how hard this team has worked. They've mm -hmm. gone through multiple quarterback changes, a coaching change, playing so many different locations on such a tight schedule. This team has worked their butt off, and I'm so happy for them. I think this is the tide change. This mm -hmm. is a difference maker. I think now that they put the formula together, they know they played an entire game. They limited the big plays, mm -hmm. and they took it one step at a time. Those are the keys to the game. They checked off every box, <laughs> and the win is what they get as the reward. And, of course, it all comes down to player of the game. We were both talking about Nelson at quarterback. Yeah, because we love him. The control room overruled us. And right? rightfully so. And rightfully so. Rightfully so. Rightfully the rightfully defense, so. Uh, your Geico player of the game, they get it done. Talk about the, the plays we oh saw. My gosh. Play after play after play after the offense let them down late. Look, three turnovers, two of them by Fred Obi. All right. By the way, that's his first game with the Valorous today. Just so you know, two crucial interceptions. Then the blocked extra point, the difference maker. This team has fought for that. Then you had the fumble recovery in the end zone. What more can you ask of your defense, honestly? When they were recruiting Obi to, to join the team, was it Princess Leia style? Help us, Obi Wan. Kenobi. Yes, you're our only, you're hope. Our only because hope. it looked like that. I'm selling you right now. In the team <laughs> store number 15 jerseys should be going up. Or matter of fact, you might get a Valor jersey with a letter D on it, and that's just enough for everybody. <laughs> Big victory for them. Great job, guys. And of course, our next game will be the Valor against the Soul here at Capital One Arena. We'll have that live for you here on Monumental Sports Network. Yes, sir, baby. It's going to be a good game. One. And I know Wes Hall will be there and. Thank you to everyone for tuning in as the Valor walk off the field victorious 49-48 for West Hall. I am Brian.